Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wild. Gentlemen, Adam. Gentlemen, this morning, great news. What's that? Great news. Oh, I want to know. Frank Corrado was called up by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Wow. 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 Congratulations to Frank. Wow. We're not, in, in case you're listening to us on the radio and you've never heard our show to get before, we're not being sarcastic. We wish Frank the best. Yes. I think it's great. Uh, I thought it was hilarious when all the Penguins fans were like, oh, we have freed Frank Corrado finally. When the Eric Fair trade happened, it's like, well, no, you didn't. You sent him to the AHL. Yeah. yeah. So. You called him up. I'm going to go with because you had to. Probably. Which, I mean, hey, I thought it was a fine trade for the Penguins to make. Same with their signing of Stuart Percy. You need a cheap, affordable, young, capable defenseman. And now you got one from the Leafs of either handedness. Wow. Congrats. Wow. That's how well you know the Leafs. Yeah, for, the, for, Leafs. The, for the price of that Alessio's good guy. And uh, fourth and Eric Fair. There you go. Not bad. There you go. Yeah. Speaking of Eric Fair, he does an awful lot of interviews for a guy that hasn't played a game for the team yet. He is the best practicer. He's well, and he's I, so I don't, again, I don't say that to be mean. I feel no. like he's like he's such a he's a team guy. You can tell he's a good dude because he's in there. Absolutely. Like you see Eric Fair quotes after every morning skate on Twitter, and you're like. And Can he's I like, oh, it's really excited to be around these guys. They're energetic. They're excited. Like, the guy hasn't been able to be put in a game yet. Can, can I tell you what that is? I know exactly what it is. So, all right. The Leafs rookies, there used to be a no rookie interview policy. They have since, air quotes, gotten rid of it. You're still barely, barely allowed to interview their rookies. So the Leafs send out the same five or six guys. And Everyone is sick of it. The veterans are sick of it. The reporters are sick of it. It's boring, and it's awful. Kadri barely says anything interesting anymore. He had a nice little quote after the Bruins game, which I I guess we'll get to. Leo Komarov, for as vocal as he is on the ice, barely says anything. JVR Pretends not to speak English well. Yeah. (laughs) JVR is just very pleasant. Matt Martin's just very pleasant. Jake Gardner's you see, just you think very Matt pleasant. Martin would be the guy that would actually be cantankerous and have something to say? No. No, because it's Lou's team. It's the Leafs. But now there's this new guy in town. And all the reporters are like, oh, thank God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Say words at us. Say words at us and make them be good words. Oh, my God. But I haven't played a game. Doesn't matter. Say new words. <laughs> <laughs> Am I really going to listen to JVR talk about, you know, it's just really good effort. And I mean, Mitch Marner, and then he cracks the slightest smile. It's a pretty good player. Thanks, JVR. Thanks. Um, thanks for giving us the same interview you gave us two weeks ago. Tonight. Morgan Riley does that too. He kind of has that. Yeah. It was a good game. It was a good game. <laughs> like, just say nothing, but there's this smirk on your face where it insinuates yeah. more. You know, there's more going on. Yeah. Um, and. What a game yesterday. Great. Leafs great fans, game. Bruins fans. By the way, every time we play the Bruins, do Bruins does Bruins hockey Twitter automatically have to tweet me that we traded Tuka Rask for Andrew Raycroft and Phil Kessel and Doug yes. Okay. Cause like I get I get that it happened. And believe me, I have been an outspoken critic of that. But like we, uh, that was ten years ago. Now here's the thing though. In terms of recent history, as in this season, what do they have to go on? Nothing. I mean, they are technically ahead in the standing, so that's that's a pretty good thing to go on. But the Leafs just swept the season series. What I'm, Which what hasn't happened starting, since 1925, I think, or something like that. It's I, ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, the last time the Leafs won four in a row against Boston was in 1967. So that was when the season series was longer than four games, obviously. Oh, okay. Um, so you're starting to see it's not just Boston. It's other teams. They're having to kind of pull a few of the old faithfuls out because the Leafs are actually kind of decent now. Mm-hmm. You know what I saw the other day that made me feel so good? Made me feel so good. OilersNation.com's uh, Instagram account had uh, that picture of Marner with his arm stretched out at the Centennial Classic. And they photoshopped in a banner between his hands. And it said, like, three weeks till summer vacation or something like that. Okay. And I'm sitting there looking at this going, when was the last time the Oilers were able to chirp the Leafs because of the playoffs? 
The answer was over a decade ago. Yeah. 2000, what, six? Yeah. Come 2006, on. That's when they went to the finals, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, like, <laughs> it's nice. I welcome it. I welcome the I welcome the church. Well, I, it's nice. I welcome it too. Here's the thing. I thought Oilers fans and Leafs fans were in this together. You know, when we Not were anymore. Both, when we were both bad, we were friends. I think I it's, like Oilers it's still fans. playful. I, well it's still playful. Mm, um not not the media angle, that's for sure. I saw some tweets this morning that were like just so you know, Connor McDavid is better than Austin Matthews, which I don't think anybody in Toronto oh. has ever disputed. Yeah, but that was from Edmonton, and uh, that's from Edmonton. Whatever, it's from, I, it's I did from, see that. It's from a belligerent guy. sportscaster in Edmonton who is literally appealing to the dumbest uh, available <laughs> listener. He, this guy who will remain nameless, and I know very little about. Like I give everyone I, I, at least two chances, and he had one really bad one earlier this season. They go, hmm, that was dumb. But is he dumb? And then I saw that, and I'm like, oh, he's just dumb. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't he's an okay guy who said one dumb thing. No, he's just dumb. <laughs> and let him. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I don't care. Um, with with the game last night, mm. and Boston fans, Leafs fans, um, and I tweeted this too, no matter what you were a fan of last night, except for the last two minutes, for three minutes for Boston Bruins fans, yeah. that was a fun hockey game. Extremely fun. Uh, back and forth, didn't need a lot of goals to be fun. Um, that was the second straight game uh, where the Leafs have taken a really good team, like a, a team that's in the playoffs for sure, and they had just a nice little low-scoring affair. Just a nice low-scoring affair. The Blackhawks, that was a 2-1 overtime game, which they lost, but it was a 2-1 overtime game. This was essentially a 2-1 win for the Leafs that they won 4-2. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the two empty netters happen. Does that Dominic Moore goal at the end even happen? Let's call it a 2-1 win, right? And then they didn't even allow a goal against Tampa. So all of a sudden, the Leafs have turned in three, I thought, really strong defensive efforts. They got outshot pretty good in a couple of the games. I don't remember what the shots were in the Bruins game. I think it was pretty even. But the scoring chances are down. Freddie looks nice and calm. He's coming up with a few big saves. And it was fun because the last few games have had all those things. Had the highlight reel goals, even though there weren't very many. Had uh, some nice saves. This one had a little bit of hate. A little extra hate. It was good. Against Chicago, there, there were a couple tense moments. No real hate. There was some hate in this one. There was. Matt Martin... Like, one thing I I said earlier in the season was, yes, he's racked up a ton of hits. But when was the last time you saw a player go down, like, from a Matt Martin hit? And you go, oh, he's really, he's going to feel the effects of that for the rest of the game. The Brendan Carlo hit? Dude, this guy's hitting to murder now. This guy's hitting for real. Every hit was thunderous. And I don't know if he's able to go into the corner with more speed because he's got more confidence because Brian Boyle is there. I think that line is just functioning better. The fourth lines look great. It's looked great. It's not a liability at all. They had one situation where they were kind of hemmed in their zone, I think, in the third period there, midway through. But other than that, they looked great. Matt Martin was nasty. Komarov and Marshan going going at it. And Bozak <laughs> laughing in between. Oh, that was hilarious. Uh, Martin getting Chara off the ice at a key point in the game. Um, that sauce hit on Bergeron. Oh, I, I can't really frame that as a good thing. He was lucky to only get two, we're, I think. We're, okay, we're, we want, I want to talk about that a little bit later. I do okay, want to okay, get sure. to that specifically. Um, but I do want to, I want to start with the last five minutes of that game. Mm. And I want to know what Dominic Moore was thinking. <sighs> Here's the way I framed it in my video. Was by the way, if you missed the game, Dominic Moore takes a penalty yeah, sorry. with three minutes to go. It's a one-all game, and it is this is this is like when you get two very strong people together and they they like link hands, like fingers, and they just push against each other. Hulk and Hogan and Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania six. Yes, just push yeah. it, <laughs> and like it was, and and it and it takes one wrong move. And the whole thing's over. And this is that moment. And Dominic Moore's not a dirty guy. No. Nope. He's not really a penalty guy. He's a, he's a penalty killer. Uh, I think so. So I don't understand what happened with Soshnikov. I know, obviously, he was mad about the hit, but we'll talk about that. Oh, you know what? It didn't even occur to me that it was Soshnikov and how much more that must sting. It didn't even occur to me. Shoot. Should have mentioned that in the video. Oh, well. Uh, what I said in the video was 
there are games where everything gets called. There are games where nothing gets called. And this was weirdly, this game was weirdly both. Oh, yeah. There were times where everything got called, and the stuff that they chose to ignore after calling the things that they called was astounding. It was baffling. And I I, I think players, if you call a ton of penalties, they don't mind. If you call no penalties, they don't mind, as long as you're consistent. Now, I looked at that more thing, and I go, okay, it's definitely interference. But based on some of the calls or non-calls from earlier in the game, is it? To me, it looked like blatant interfer- interference near the net. And that's what, when you get into that hash, like below the hash marks, doesn't matter what side. Yeah. As soon as you start like running interference like that, that's, I think it's, it's the scoring chances. Yeah. Where, when, when the scoring, if that had happened in the middle of the ice, I wonder if that would have been anything at all. But I think because that could have opened up a scoring chance for Boston, the refs are like, no, I'm sorry. And we this is call a, that. That's 100% the thing. So Boston fans, I'm with you that that was a bit of a shady call, but that exactly was a pass away from the game tying goal. So game winning goal. Game winning goal. Sorry. You're right. It was 1 1. Jeez. Yeah. What a season shifting. It's a season shifting play, not just game, play. And Dominic Moore couldn't be a better guy. No, so no. like great yeah, guy. You, you interviewed him. I've done. Uh, I've done uh, Smash Fest two so, years in a row, and, and so it just seemed out of out of character. And uh, listen, I'm yeah. not. I'm not blind to the fact that Sashnikov has known has been known to sell things in the way Brad Marchand and now uh, Kadri have. I don't think he sold that. Oh, I think, okay, I think I'm, he listen, got I'm taken not, down. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I he sold it. You don't think so? Okay. No, no. That was. I. Uh, it was a strong net front battle, and again, I, it's situational. If. If there's a puck battle going on in the corner at the time, I don't think it gets called. But Boston had clear possession of the puck. So you take out Sosh, all of a sudden no one's on you. It's a five guy on who four. Wore, yeah. And you're open in front of the net, and you're a pass away from a, a grade A scoring chance. That's why they called it. Eh. I, you know, for as much as I criticize refs, I don't envy them. No. I don't envy him because no. I'm calling it the wrong call while agreeing with it <laughs> at the same time. You know, it's like there's the more shocking ones. Like, okay, the Marshawn dive. For the love of God, have some pride, man. What? Have it's, some pride. Listen, it's Brad Marshawn. He, 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 his pride is winning and scoring goals. And, well, and you know what? He yeah. keeps doing both. And I, I said it in the video. I'm like, you know what? If you know what you can get away with and you're paid to win hockey games, why wouldn't you do everything in your ability to win that hockey game? And that's game? what he does. But, he doesn't play by the old, have some pride, young man. He plays by the, I'm going to win. And you know what? The I guy respect it. jumped. He jumped. <laughs> he exploded, I believe. I just found out that Nikita Soshnikov has the strength of the guy who plays the mountain. So can we talk th- about yeah. that hit? Because was it? I mean, not uh, Zaitsev, sorry. The other Zaitsev, Nikita. okay. Um, well, yeah, Zaitsev, which, by the way, he's now thrown a heavy hit all, all year. And that's no, okay. You know what, though? So, sorry, before we get to Sash, Babcock has been very good at assigning roles mm-hmm. to players this year. And he seemed to really, really motivate Kadri by going, here's what you are. Every night, you go out and you make the other team's top center hate his life. That's your job. <laughs> And Kadri's really reveled in that role. And scored a lot. Zaitsev has struggled defensively at times, racked up a lot of points, especially for a rookie defender, still trying to figure out his way around the league. Since that 7-2 butt kicking uh, at the hands of the Panthers. Or in my case, butt shaving. But sh- oh no, Adam! Oh no, gene freezing. That 7-2 gene freezing. Um... He's been nastier, and he seems to have been assigned to specific players a little bit more. Like, didn't he seem glued to Marshan? Yes. In this one? Yeah. Especially in the third, I felt. And I think he's looked better as a result. He did take that one penalty, but... Well, and I think part probably part of that is Babcock figuring out what he's got. <laughs> no no better time than now. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, like, but it took, I mean, it, it took Nazem Kadri 
a few games with Babcock last season to figure it out. Well, it took him a few years. It took a few yeah, years, exactly. but like, but with that, like Babcock had to feel some of these guys out to go. Okay, what are what are you going to yeah. be in this position? I'm going to try in this. I'm going to try in this, and we'll see what one creates the most success. And I w- I want to talk. I want to come back to that because I actually think that's a really good one. But while we're on the subject of penalties and the subject of cover, who's covering who and who's hitting who, before we talk Sosh, Matt Martin and Zidane Chara that- cross checking each other in the middle of the ice. Both of them off. That one, I think, is a matter of communication. So we can't hear what the refs are saying on the ice. And I think usually they let a little cross-check jousting match like that go. But you see, Matt Martin's kind of the one who's initiating it. He knows who he knows who he's fighting with right there. He knows it's Chara. I think what happened was probably, hey, you two do it again. You're both going. Shove, shove. You're both going. Get lost. And again, not a fair trade for the Bruins. Man, look, I get it. If you're a Boston fan and you're mad this morning, I get it. I'd be mad too. But Zidane Chara is old enough to know. Let it go. Old enough to know better. Uh, and also, Bruins fans, as bad as I feel for you, no. No, because <laughs> you've benefited from those calls for f- about six years now. The, and the Bruins, again, they've been great. I can't even fault them for it. If you can get away with something, why wouldn't you do it? If you know you can punch Henrik Sedin in the face repeatedly, <laughs> why wouldn't you do that? He's Henrik Sedin. And win the cup. <laughs> what, you mean I can punch him and there's nothing? There's the, Bang, bang, bang. I'm going to speed bag him. <laughs> speed bag him all game. Why not? Why wouldn't I do that? You mean I can, I can just grab someone after every single whistle? Of course I'm going to do that. Boston, you've benefited from games like this. We get this one. Uh, <laughs> Sajnikov on Marshan. Bergeron. Bergeron, sorry. Why did I say Marshan? Just talking if Bergeron about- doesn't get up, how many games is Sajnikov suspended? It's his first one, so two or three. Do you think he gets anything? Two or three. Or actually, didn't he get something last year? No, he got injured last year. That's different. That's very different. Very different. Uh, I think, yeah, if Bergeron is actually hurt, he gets something. I, I would say two or three games. The fact that Kachuk... Like only got two for that first time offender, dude. That was a WWE. That was like a, a John People. Jones spinning <laughs> back elbow to friggin' the Swedish guy, Drew Doughty. Gustafson, was or whatever. It Drew his name. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Drew Doughty. I'm talking about the UFC. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Um, um, and he's not first time offender. He was suspended ten games for four separate incidents during his career. Who is this? Oh, they. Said Keith Kachuk. Oh, uh, um, not, uh, not his kid. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. His no, kid's I was too like, young. I'm like, already? Just, he's like 19 no, no, no. already. I was like, that's suspended. amazing. He's a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Kachuk was suspended. Kachuk was suspended 10 games, but they were in reference to his father. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And that's right. He was a nasty customer. I apologize. So, I mean, if you can just flagrantly elbow a guy in the brain like that and only get two games, I can't imagine Sash would get more than three. Do you think he'll be suspended? No. Maybe a fine. Mm -hmm. And here's what does save him. While he wasn't thrown out of the game, he was penalized. Mm. He got two minutes. Now, again, should Bergeron have been penalized for what he did to Sash? Probably. You can't just get up and start punching someone. But doesn't it feel wrong that that was just four on four? A hit from behind is the same as that. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No, it didn't feel right. Like at very, you know what it probably should have been. What would have been fair and maybe not enough for Bruins fans, but still fair. Four and two. Sosh gets two for boarding, two for roughing. Bergeron gets two for roughing. We still get Bergeron off the ice. I still don't mind. <laughs> no, get Bergeron off the ice, but it's a Bruins power play, and it's not four on four where Mitch Marner can set up Morgan Riley for the game tying goal. Right, and then and, and oh my God, what a pass! That four on four, which was completely different from the four on four that Matt Martin and Zidane Ochar created, because it felt like in that one, I was like, okay, here's an opportunity for a team that can skate like the Leafs to really open it up, and boy, did they spend the whole time in that second four on four chasing. They did not they, look great for most of the third. No, no, no they looked very much like a th- the third period team that they've looked. Yeah. I'll tell you, Brian Boyle saved a goal with about seven minutes to go. 
and they were everybody was out of position. And it felt like even though it was five on five, the Bruins had a power play. They mm-hmm. were they were moving the puck so well. They were possessing it well. They were protecting it well. I think I, I think I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, and I forget who it was that took the shot, but Brian Boyle. Block the first one. It goes back yeah. to him, and then the other one goes off of Brian Boyle into the crowd. He's such a school bus. He's he's, he's huge. so huge, big boy. Yeah. yeah. So it was that to me was why you get a guy like that. He's really really good. I sure hope he sticks around. I know all the Tampa fans are like, no, <sighs> no, he won't. No, his wife likes it here. No. Um, listen, crazier things have happened. I'd like him to stay in Toronto. It'd be great. He's a great player. I thought. That was one of the pivotal moments, and I don't think anybody's talking about it this morning, but it was really, wow, that was a game saver. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. Now, one thing I want to talk about, and you mentioned this a little bit early, Steve, is is the use of certain players. Yes. So one of the stats I read this morning uh, was that uh, Tyler Bozak plays about 15, 16 minutes a night, right? Under, uh, Under Randy Carlisle, Tyler Bozak played 21 minutes a night. Yes. Crazy, right? Yeah, big and, difference. And back then, Tyler Bozak was a guy where we were like, he is not a number one center. Stop using him that way. And as soon as he pulled back, they've used him in the, th- I, I guess you would call it the third line. Well, I think It depends li- who they're playing. Well, lines one, yeah. two, and three on the Leafs are essentially the same. What's the Leafs' top line? Everyone I, will give you a different answer. Hmm? I a- still any say, line is arguable. I say it's Kadri Komarov-Brown. You think it's the top line? I think that's the top line. You think that's line number one? Is it? Matthews, Nylander, Hyman? Is it? Is it Bozak, JVR, JVR Bozak. Marner? I would exactly. Think, yeah. Exactly. I would think probably Bozak, JVR, Marner. Depends on the night. Fair. So, so in Tyler, but Tyler Bozak has had probably his best year this year. He's also playing injured. Um, mm-hmm. He scored the, the, JVR too. the, the go ahead goal. Yep. And it was really um, right place, right time. He knows where to be. But I thought this was interesting. The way Morgan Riley seems to have been used in the last couple of games. Hmm. While you're thinking of that, Jesse, can you bring up the box score for the game so we can look at the time on ice? Because sure. that was really interesting too, and it may play into what you're talking about. I feel like Morgan Riley, and maybe I'm wrong here, Morgan Riley was used in a in, for a lot of this season in a defensive role, right? They haven't put him on power plays. Yeah. They have put, you know, penalty kill and against the team's top lines and that sort of thing. It seems like in the last couple of games... He's been jumping into the rush a little bit more. Feels a little bit unleashed. Unleashed, yeah. And I wonder if they look at Morgan Riley and go, okay, we've tried him in all these positions, and it's not necessarily working the best. (laughs) Maybe the best defense with him is a good offense. As in, instead of him defending against the threats, he is the threat. There you go. There you go. How's How's Sidney Crosby on defense? I don't know. He's always got the puck. I assume he's good, but he's, yeah. Because I, I don't see him in his own end very often. You know what I mean? Matthews, too. It's like when, what was it, Taze in Chicago? They're like, oh, you were last in the league in hits. It's like, yeah, because we've always got the puck. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think it was someone else. Okay. But uh, it was it was someone on the Blackhawks, yeah. Yep, you're absolutely right. So I wonder if now they're looking at it and going, okay, that's the way we got to go back to using him. And, you know, they put, it was so funny, Babcock put Polak on with him. And, and Carrick. And Carrick. First the, game back. The too. thing that I keep reading uh, is and Stephen Birch, one of the writers from Sportsnet.ca, has always said this: is put put guys like Gardner and Riley with shot suppression specialists, guys that are going to stop shots. That's when they look the best. So, mm. I mean, I, I don't know. Polak, that, I don't know. <laughs> I is guess. Polak that guy? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Marinson. The problem is Gardner and Riley are both left-handed shots, so you got to play one of them on their off side. Poor, poor Marinson. I still think there's a future for him somewhere, maybe even in Toronto, but it's just not the right fit. It's not quite the right fit. It might be Vegas. Might be. Um, uh, of Connor Carrick uh, yesterday, Mike Babcock said re- he played really good after 11 games on the LTIR. Very competitive. He's smart. He moves the puck. He will help us out way better next game. Okay, so this is this is... So bizarre. Okay. So I didn't mention this in the LFR video because I thought the box score just hadn't updated properly yet. So remember what you were just saying about uh, Bozak? Right. In his time on ice. You know how much time he played against the Bruins? No. 23 minutes and 12 seconds. Are we sure? Did you That's... take a look at Marner's number? Marner, 
who was, as they said in the broadcast several times, dancing last night, 24 minutes and 7 seconds. JVR, 22 minutes and 45 seconds. Matthews, 8 minutes, 57 seconds. The whole game? The whole game. William Nylander, 9 minutes and 16 seconds. And Zach Hyman, eight minutes and fifty seconds. I don't know, man. I don't. That does not seem right to me. No power play time, as far as I can see. You're telling me that Mitch Marner played almost half the game yesterday? Yeah, I don't think so. That's what it says, than, man. I think he played more than any defenseman. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Hunwick eleven, Carrick twenty. Are we sure? Zaitsev that's right? twenty-four minutes and twenty-seven seconds. Oh. Riley twenty-five minutes and forty-seven seconds. Playoff and game. Gardner played just under twenty-three. Boy, did he he chose his line, and I'm not even faulting him for choosing that line because they looked really good, and he rode him like a pony. Now, what about uh, what about the fourth line, Brian Boyle? What are his numbers looking like? Uh, Boyle, who I think had a little bit more work. T- what? That can't be right. His total time on ice was five minutes and 53 seconds. I Is this wrong? I think this it is wrong. It has to be. I don't think so. I know, Here, I no, man. They were having start. scoreboard issues yesterday, too. I don't oh. think that's right. I don't think that's right, man. I think those, how on earth did they keep track of all this? Yeah, I I don't know, man. I don't I don't think those don't sound right. I don't see Marner, Marner playing twenty seven minutes. Wow, he was he just wasn't on the ice enough. Leading the Leafs, uh, Freddie Anderson. <laughs> oh, well, no, I'm not. I'm not reading that whole thing. That looks like binary. <laughs> to me, simple, that looks blinds. like that looks like. Remember those like automatic pianos? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That looks like the um, whatever the paper but is. The clock being out is a very very good point. I think How, maybe who kept track of. This? I yeah. think maybe the intern that kept track of these mm. maybe left the stopwatch running a if little that, too far. Because that seems wrong. Yeah, I don't think Marner. I, I, I love. That that seems listen, wrong. I saw. I saw Matthews and Nylander play more than that. I, I swear. That's what I thought. Okay. That's what I thought. So going to so, screw up their stats for the season though. Eh, I game. mean, they'll eventually f- they'll correct, correct it. it. The Leafs keep. I don't think they will. The Leafs keep their own. The Leafs oh. keep their own, and they keep them separate. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should ask uh, Andrew with Sport Logic because I'm sure Andrew Berkshire would have different numbers. Than like, that. there's no. W- <sighs> anyway, we we'll, we got to go to break for a second. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, a the play of Freddie Anderson. B Leafs chances of making the playoffs right now, Ooh. and what they have to do to get there. The rumored cutoff: ninety four points currently they sit at 81 we'll be right back on sportsnet 590 the fan are you ready for this stat i want to hear it remember the shaky freddie anderson in february shaky freddie anderson like followed like by the, like crooked hillary clinton and and failing new oh, york times lion ted <laughs> lion ted that's and right. <laughs> civvy anderson i don't know Ander- yeah well in the last five games mm. sorry seven games mr anderson is five one and one with a 940 save percentage. And the one is a pretty bad one. The one was a bad one. But but a 9 5 1 and 1. 940 save percentage. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, that's okay. That's I will okay. take that as well. Uh before this run that the Leafs are on right now. The chances of making them making the playoffs was hovering about 30%. The beginning of March, the Leafs playoffs chances <sighs> sure. were 30%. I understand what you're about to say. I get it. And they are now above 70%. I hate those charts. Me too. I hate them. Because they don't mean anything. It's, it's the worst. It literally stat means nothing. In history. It's just, you know what it is? They it's, change you no, you're not allowed to change that much. You're not. It's the reporters going, words. <laughs> like <laughs> words. Words. Because the words. chances are dependent on what happens each night. So it doesn't really mean anything that on a certain day your chances are this percentage because you have to play more games. So it it's like yeah. yeah. And I, and it's like, oh, well, okay, so like, let's say last week their chances were at like 30%, which I don't think is too far off from the truth. I think it was a little bit higher than that. W- did they really overcome the odds in extraordinary ways to get to where they are today? Well, 5-1-1 they won a couple one games. One is pretty damn good. Yeah, but they won a couple games. Their opponents lost a couple games. Well, like, I think part I of know. the reason why the percentage went up so high, too, is you've got Tampa and the Islanders losing recently in overtime. And the Leafs continuing to be on this run. Yeah, they I, had I to win know. these games. Remember, two weeks ago, you looked at them, you looked at me, and you said they'll either win these games or they won't. We'll see if they're a playoff team or they're not. And they did. I think it's just an interesting distraction. I don't know how much it actually means. Kind of like this podcast. And interesting. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's so nice. But let's. I, well, the actual numbers are this: Toronto's got eighty-one points. They're in the second wild card. 
New York Islanders, 78 points. They are th- they are like the, the closest one. Uh, Tampa Bay, 77, and then it falls off a little bit from there. Philly at 74, Carolina 73, Florida 73, Buffalo 72, and Detroit 67. Um, LOL. So, yes. So, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, it's by no means done. Toronto's got 81 points. Boston has 82. The Islanders could still catch Boston. Right, but they're in a different division. Tampa could still catch Boston. Well, yeah, Tampa could still something. catch Boston. Well, Detroit technically could still catch. Yeah, Boston. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> mathematically they can. Mathematically they can. Uh, you're right. Different division. Oh. But here's the here's the thing. Okay, so 94 points is about what people are predicting it will take to make the playoffs this year, bare minimum. The Leafs have got to win. They have 11 games left. They've got to win six, uh, at least, or at least yeah. go five, three, and three. <sighs> so the Leafs and they need- have such a Bad Here's what schedule. they need to do. Ready? Win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss. They gotta go 500. Well, and if you're gonna lose, yeah. lose in overtime. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, you look at their uh, like even their next two games. They get Columbus on the road, so in Columbus on Wednesday. That sucks, and you would be lucky to escape with a point. Then you get the Devils. Who you want. You want to play the Devils. They've struggled this season. You want to play them. They're a team below you in the standings. You should beat them. And you're playing them at home. But it's the night after you just went to war with Columbus in Columbus. So you had to travel after that war. And now you got to play the Devils tired. To that, I say who this. Who plays against who, by the way? To that, I say this. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Um, well, first, first off, Curtis McElhinney is definitely starting that second game. I no, think you should you start the first game. I yeah. think he should start against his former team. Yeah. Why do you say that? Uh, you frame it as, well, we're letting Mac play against his former team. And, you know, I, th- I think you should give players the opportunity to do that, even though I didn't let Freddie do it. I think uh, Curtis should get this opportunity. Nope. And you should just straight up be like, well, we have a much better chance of beating yeah. the Devils. <laughs> That's Well, I don't think Babcock would ever look at it that way, but he should. Um, I don't think he should. I think you, I think you got to deploy your best against Columbus. You know why? It's a confidence thing. If the Leafs play Columbus really, really well and beat them, and be, and even get a point, it's a it's a confidence booster. You got to give them every opportunity to beat Columbus. And here's the thing: New Jersey is dead last in the Eastern Conference. You start your back up against wow. the dead last team. They're, they've got 64 <sighs> points. I'm not saying that they're bad. Or, I'm just saying they are dead last in the conference. Or you save your guns for the game you think you're going to get. What's really unfortunate is we know how this is. It'll be it'll be Anderson McElhinney. I you know what I think it might be Anderson Anderson. Oh, because the second half of the back to back is at home. You start your starter at home. Like when was the last time? Wait, it's New Jersey in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So it's Toronto in Columbus. That's New not Jersey a bad flight. In Toronto. They shouldn't be too tired after that after the it's, the flight part. But it's an hour where you're sitting after that. You know what I mean? You ever you ever gotten out of the car? You ever so okay. I the trainer I used to go see sometimes it would be an hour drive to get home after the trainer. Ooh. And you would get out of the car like tales of the crypt uh, crypt keeper. <laughs> because you just you put your body at to war and I don't think the you know, little push-ups I was doing amount to playing Columbus. <laughs> right. Now, there's this debate about Freddy versus Mac and which game should it be. If I had one major criticism of Mike Babcock this season, it's they've had so many back-to-backs. They still have, I think, at least two. Mm-hmm. At least two featuring Columbus, by the way. Yes. Um. You have these spares. Use them. Use the spare. Mar- all three of Marinson, uh, Levo, Marchenko. and Fair. Oh, and Marchenko. Oh, geez, or Marchenko. Marinson or Marchenko, or both, should get a taste of one of the next two games. Do JV- okay, Bozak has played great recently, and actually so has JVR, but they're both playing hurt. If you want to be a playoff team, at what point do you go, we have Levo and Fair? We have these two. 
but we know that's not going to happen if that time on ice thing is correct. Oh my god, that time I don't on ice know, thing man. Is definitely not correct. This is stressful times. Know, maybe. Man, this is stressful I doubt times. Maybe Marner played half the game. Can you look up Columbus's schedule just so I know what we're getting into? Because maybe they're playing tonight and. That would be wonderful. I and would they definitely are four appreciate one that. in the last five. Um, and by the way, the Leafs have, if you include the one tomorrow night, they have three back to backs left. <laughs> it's not fun. Columbus yeah, I think and most Washington of them are at home, but Columbus and Washington, by the way, both have one hundred points already. Pittsburgh's four of the top five teams in the NHL are in the Metro. Mm-hmm. Uh, Columbus is versus the Leafs, and then they go to Washington. So, but Columbus isn't playing tonight. They're off tonight, and they're off last night. All right, so they're fresh. So here's the thing, too. Columbus is going to want to bring their big guns against Washington because you know Columbus wants that yeah. Metropolitan Division lead. Maybe we get their backup. That's and then we give. Maybe we get Bobrovsky, Corpusalo, McElhaney. There Let's we go. see it. <laughs> Battle of the Ages, Corpusalo, McElhaney. Man, I do not envy Mike Babcock right now. Except for the paycheck, I envy that. Um, I do. This is Mike Babcock loves this. He lives I think he for does. this. Yeah. I think he does. He's like, if you're not having fun right, he he said it. If you're not having fun right now, you're in the wrong profession. And he's right. You should be having a great time. You're right in the thick of things. I if if especially if Columbus is going to start their backup, Anderson is your guy. You start him against the big teams. You put Anderson in that game, and McElhaney, put him against the Devils. And you know, I tell you what, McElhaney, I don't know how much time he's going to see for the rest of the season, but he better play his ass off because. You look at the Leafs organization, there's a legit chance they re-sign this guy. Did you see what happened to the Marlies the other day? I missed it. No, what happened? They were up 4-1 heading into the third. Stop me if you've heard this before. Nah. They lost 8-4. to four. Oh, I did see that, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think one of them might have been an empty netter. Bebo allowed seven goals. Bebo's save percentage on the season is under 900. Tell me again He's why been, they why they put more faith in him than Garrett Sparks. Garrett Sparks is hurt. No, but even His last year. His numbers are brilliant, but and Garrett Sparks was hurt last year too. For the second half. Yeah, it, it, that is one thing I feel bad for Sparks. Is so many people looked at him as the tank goalie and look at him, he sucks. He, dude, he was playing hurt. Uh, I think the Marlies would have much preferred to go with him in the playoffs. They went with Bebo. Bebo was okay. It, the the thing with him is he would be bad and then really good and then bad and then really good. I bet you the next game, after that Binghamton game, he was probably pretty good or is going to be pretty good. I don't know if they've played yet. Um, but I believe both goalies have expiring contracts. I think they're both RFAs. I'm mm-hmm. not totally sure. So that probably opens up room for Casimir Kaskasquil. He hasn't been awesome. He hasn't been awesome. And Joseph Wool's too young. So, the, like, the the backup, I mean, Freddie's locked in, but the backup position or third position, it's wide open. I thought, before he got hurt, I thought Garrett Sparks was a fine option as Leafs backup this year. I know a lot of people might not share that, but, dude, look at his numbers. I think, he was t- I think he's still top 10 in the AHL in save percentage. So, McElhinney better play his ass off because... He, he might get a contract here. I don't he, see why he wouldn't. He might. Um, well, I do. <laughs> well, I, he, I don't think he over his career has not been awesome. Yeah. They are both RFAs, by the way. There you go. Um, switching gears now. Uh, are the Kings going to make? They're going to they're going to miss the playoffs, aren't they? So what's that looking like? What's uh, what's that picture? So the standings are as follows. Actually, Jesse, you want to take this one? Sure. So the Kings have seventy five points. And they're the uh, ninth seed. And then St. Louis has the second wild card at 81. Six point gap between eighth and ninth. Wait, when did that happen? The Kings are six points out? Yeah. Do they have games in hand? Uh, no, actually. St. Louis has one game in hand. They've played 71. Kings have played 72. Have the Kings just had a really, really, really bad week? Because last I checked, they were right there. They are three losses, one overtime loss, and one win in their last five. So four, yes. four, and ten. Uh, four, four, and two in their last ten. And in that, and, and in their last five, St. Louis is four and one. Uh, seven, and, seven and three. Seven and three in their last four. ten. It's over. No matter what happens, the Kings aren't getting their cup this year. Or sorry, Aginla's not getting his cup this year. Doesn't that suck? I wonder if he, he goes has, from the Avs to the. F- He's got to have one more Kings. year. Got to have one more year, Jerome. 
One more. Go back to Calgary. Go Do play it. in Calgary one more year. Sign for nothing. Yeah. He'd be in a better position right now in Calgary. Oh, yeah. Are, well, and Calgary's got 86 points. Like, they're very, very good. I, I wonder, they're a point away. Calgary is a point away from being, right now they hold the first wild card spot. They are a point away from being second to San Jose in the Pacific Division. One point. They jump the Oilers and Anaheim. <sighs> See, we've been talking for so long about how tight it is in the Atlantic and in the East. We kind of took our eyes off the West. It's tight because there was a time. Well, I think it was I mean, only a week or two ago. Pacific's tight. Central, not so much. Right. Okay. So the Pacific's really tight. But that's, that's I don't know, that's a little bit like the East too. But uh, there was a time like a week or two ago, it looked like the Oilers could potentially miss. Right. And a team like LA can knock them out. And Oilers get hot and too bad. Um, Jesse, do me a favor. Mm-hmm. Oilers are four and one in their last five. By the way, can you tell me what Minnesota's in their last ten? Oh yeah, they are two and eight, flat. Mm-hmm. They have lost at least five straight. I know that for sure. I don't know. I, I know that they it could have be lost five straight. They have. They're, yeah, that's their streak. And this is this is super stupid, but I think the Vesna race is getting a little bit muddy. It's Bobrovsky. You you think so? I yeah, think it probably has to be. He's, the only one who's been consistent. Well, what about Matt Murray, though? Nick Price. How do you take that season? away? Matt Murray and... Well, maybe the Calder. Not, not, not the Vesna. Yeah. games. Not the what about, And the Holt Beast? Maybe Holt Beast. 100 points already? But Borowski's numbers are better than Holt Beast. And yeah. they're about the same. Again, it's a little bit like the Jack Adams. You go with the surprise. I expected Holt Beast to be good behind the Caps. I didn't expect Bobrovsky to be good behind the Blue Jackets. And they're Fair both enough. at 100 Points. Right, ergo, Bobrovsky wins. Yeah. Um, would you like to know what place and how many points the Stanley Cup favorite Winnipeg Jets are? Aren't they not far out? They're not far out. They're the tenth seed. Oh, there you go. Um, as as Jesse pointed out, it was all us, we could talk about heading into the season. St. All we could talk about. <laughs> St. Louis has eighty one points. Winnipeg seventy one. Ah, <laughs> you lied. But every year is a Stanley Cup year. Oh. Um, don't tell me they don't go, need Paul. Since we were talking about trophy races, who do you think is going to take the Art Ross? McDavid sits at 82 points, Crosby at 80, Marchand at 80, and Kane at 79. And if Kane picks it up, he can do back-to-back years. Yes, and he would be the first one since Yager. In, Which is crazy. I think it was 2001. 2000, 2001, I might be wrong. Um, so those are your top It's definitely four, Yager. And they're all within three points. I think what we've learned is don't, ever, ever sleep on Sidney Crosby. And I think he leads all of them in points per game. Yeah, because he's only done it in 65 games and they've all played 72. <laughs> wow. To- toying with his food. He's- yeah, I think, I think, listen. I think good, it's going to be Crosby. Connor McDavid's been great. But let's also remember that the other guys that are in that race, Patrick Kane, Sidney Crosby, who else was it? Brad Marchand. Brad Marchand. With the exception, Brad Marchand's a little different, but Connor McDavid is put in every position to score, right? He doesn't have to share that with anybody because he's basically the only one on the team who creates that kind of offense. Right. Right? Yeah. Creates those kinds of chances. Crosby's got Malkin. Uh, Kane probably is in a league of his own, even in the Chicago Blackhawks, but there are other they players. Weapons. They have weapons. They got weapons. They got weapons. Right? Yeah. Marion Host is still, even at his advanced stage, still okay. Yeah. Um, you know, there's other people. I feel like Connor Had McDavid could just... Uh, yeah, never sleep on Crosby. But I feel like Connor McDavid is going to be, of all those people, going to get the most chances. Because he, the Oilers need Connor McDavid to get those chances. They need him. Uh, if you look at the numbers with Connor McDavid on the ice and then the Oilers without him on the ice, they're atrocious. You know, it's disgusting. I'd, so, be, I'd be pretty okay with Marchand slowing down. I'd be pretty okay with that too. And hey, like, listen, the Leafs I, might catch him. I think it'd be cool as hell to see Connor McDavid win an Art Ross. I think it'd be really, really cool. In his second year. In his second year. Well, he Where he didn't win the Calder season. last year. Okay. Well, he played a half season. Yeah. Right? So. Are you a hockey fan? Okay, good. You want the Leafs to play the Senators first round. You want it. Too bad. You didn't even know you wanted it, and you want it. Actually, I sort of I sort of hope the Senators catch, um, catch Montreal and the Leafs catch Boston. I want a Montreal-Toronto so bad. And I feel like it almost happened a couple of years ago, and the Leafs drove off a cliff in March. I... I want that. That's what I want. I'm I'll ask, take Ottawa Leafs. I'm going to ask a very, very dumb question. 
I'm hesitating. I'm ashamed to Being ask this question. Is this is this a Toronto centric question? Oh, it's definitely Toronto centric. Like question. Who would you rather the Leafs play in a playoff series? In terms of who do you think they have a better chance against? Not what would be more fun. Who do you think they would have a better chance against? The Ottawa Senators mm. or the Washington Capitals? I honest to God think it might be Washington. Really? No, no. The way the know, Sens man. have played the Leafs this season, it hasn't been fun. It hasn't been fun. No, but one of those two teams is the best team in the NHL. The Leafs are currently winning the season series. Uh, oh man! The answer is the answer is obviously <laughs> Ottawa. Yeah, but part of me is like ah, Washington. No. Like I, well, part here's of me, what I like about that. Okay, here's what I like about that. Sure, the Leafs if they make the playoffs, no pressure. Yeah, literally no pressure. It's like hey, this is house money, baby. You just do you do you. Washington we'll we, pressure. If we don't win this season, we're, we're a failure. Yep. Like, if we don't win this season, oh Ovechkin my God, we may never get a cup with us. Or it's going to take a couple years to retool this team. Washington's got all the pressure. And Columbus doesn't have any pressure. If you follow if you follow the, whatever it is, model of success uh, that I guess the Blackhawks had and the Penguins had, especially the Penguins, it's okay, you suck. Then you make the playoffs and get smashed first round by a legit contending team. I'm okay if the Leafs crash against the Rocks uh, against the Caps. Me too. I'm okay with that because I want them to know what it's like. Oh, there's this. That's there's the this level. gear. This these guys are another thing. But if they any fighter lands a good punch, ah. <laughs> How are we your, having this stupid was, conversation? What are the better chances? The better chances are they would beat Ottawa. I think I saw some stat where the Sens have only been leading against the Leafs for like 10 minutes out of like all the games that they've played. Like surprised. the Leafs have been leading for like three times more or whatever. Yeah, but the Leafs blew the first they game. They found a way and, to blow them yeah. all. So, I mean, it, I mean, there's a chance the Leafs play the Sens and it goes great for the Leafs. Um, but for that developmental reason, I kind of would rather them play the Caps. Well, I hope we get that option. I hope we. I hope that's a problem. I was. I was talking. I hope I, it's like, oh no, we have to play the Capitals because it'll be me. I know. It, stop the sentence that. Oh no, we have to play. Period. It will, it will be easier for me mentally if the Leafs play the Caps. Because if the Leafs play the Sens, they have to beat the Sens. Because, damn it, Battle of Ontario, we can't lose that unbeaten record. We need that. You bunch of jerks, we need that. Play the Caps, it's like, oh, I got nothing against you. <laughs> have they ever even played against each other in the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know. Not don't that know. I can think of. Ah, have fun. Go have fun. Well, the Leafs were in the West for a long time, too, so they would have never had the chance. I don't know if they've ever played them. I and dude, I would oh, like to it's see Ovechkin. What do you expect him to beat Ovechkin? It's the same way the Leafs came into the season. What do you expect them to actually win? And then what if they do? I would love to see because it wouldn't be Kadri on Ovechkin. It'd be Kadri on Backstrom and Kamran <sighs> and on Ovechkin. Think of oh yes, first of all, you're correct. Second of all, think of how much better a player that could make Kadri. Mm-hmm. You stick him on Backstrom for four to seven straight games. Ugh. That's awful. <laughs> that's awful. But for Backstrom. That's, that's, no, that's awful for Kadri. For Kadri. Well, yeah, I and, guess. But, and hopefully Backstrom by the end of it. You know what I mean? But if it if it's that awful for Kadri, he discovers, oh, there's that. Right? It's good for the development. <laughs> ah! Okay. No, but sorry. I was talking to Emily Benjamin. Uh, for She's a writer for NHL.com uh, before the show today. And... I was like, I was talking about how the mission right now is just get in. Just get in. So we're talking about picking and choosing opponents. No, 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 no. Just get in. What if it's the Caps? I'm cool with that. Don't care. Don't care. Just get in. Just get in. If there was, I think the number one team I don't want to play is the Blue Jackets, actually. Because the Leafs just can't against them. They just can't seem to get anything going. They can't even. They can't. I would rather uh, play the Penguins. Wow. Seriously. See, you know what? That would be cool. I'd like to see a Leafs Penguins only because it would it would really truly show that you you talk about lessons. Yeah. Lessons learned. Malkin and Crosby, 
They teach the Leafs some lessons. Oh, yes. And you, okay, Steve, who do you think is a better team? Oh, Pittsburgh. No question. Who would you rather play? Oh, Pittsburgh. And, and, <laughs> Out and, of and Pittsburgh Penguin, Blue, Blue Jackets? And the Penguin fans gloating about Phil Castle. I get it. I would expect it. Ooh. Yeah, on second thought, I don't want that series. <laughs> oh, God. I like the learning so, experience. The Leafs have never played the Washington Capitals in a playoff series. There you go. Gimme. That would be cool. Gimme. I'd like That's to see what it is right now, by Ovechkin the way. in Toronto? Come on. Gimme. Hmm? Gimme. How don't you want that? If you're a Leafs fan, how don't you want that? <laughs> Come on. In the uh, in the offline section of this show, we got to talk a little bit more about the Oilers and some of the amazing success they've had. You know, we we kind of we kind of say, "Hey, what are they, what are they without Connor McDavid?" But with Connor McDavid, some amazing things have happened. So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the top 20 UFAs, sorry, not UFAs, RFAs going into 2017 and a little update on the US women's hockey players and their negotiations with uh, USA Hockey, Ooh. which is really really great, uh, plus some other stuff because we always go off the rails in the download section of this sportsnet.ca or you can get us on iTunes, Podstitcher, whatever. Uh, Google Play. Google Play. It's the Steve Dangle Podcast brought to you by Panago Pizza. It's what's on the inside that counts. So earlier in the show I asked, are the Los Angeles Kings done this season? We don't know. Sure looks like it. The reason I asked is because Big Rig Maroon. Oh my God. Scored his 25th goal of the season. And put a nail in the coffin against the Los Angeles Kings. 25 goals for Pat Maroon. If he reaches 30, he will only need two more 30-goal seasons to catch Patrick Kane. <laughs> Does That's that good. put him in the top 100 of all time next century? I would say it would make him the best Patrick currently playing in the NHL. Okay. <laughs> You're such a jerk. People I know. At this so point, I'm just this. saying it to be obnoxious. Uh, um, I don't care. 25 goals. Not bad. He is... Like, isn't that what Milan Lucic was supposed to be? Oilers fans are so fun. They're so funny. It's funny seeing how they're reacting to this current team. Because there are things to hate about the Oilers, okay? Lucic's contract is miserable. Not to mention that they got Patrick Maroon for far less. And Patrick Maroon is Lucic. He's what they wanted Lucic to be. It's a win-win. (laughs) <laughs> so you, get both. you literally have your cake and eat it too yeah yeah and lucic in the playoffs is gonna be fun yeah. but you might have so much it makes you sick with that seven-year deal but lucic in the playoffs that is something i thought about dude you traded taylor hall for adam larson statistically there is nothing you could throw at me to justify that but mm-hmm. look at where they are it looks like it's working look at where they are i'm i what is is shirelli some kind of mad scientist I don't think so. I think those are two easily criticizable moves. But look at them. There they are. It's It's got to be fun. It's got to be very strange to be an Oilers fan. You, I've seen some Oilers fans, particularly ones that deeply hated the Hall trade, who, like, it's like, are you allowed to be happy? Are you allowed to enjoy your team's success? Well, I think you could hate the P.K. Subban trade and still cheer for the Montreal Canadiens. There's a, yeah, and again, there's a lot of Habs fans who seem to be struggling with that, too. The difference is I think it's easier to like Shea Weber because mm-hmm. Shea Weber's Shea Weber. And Michelle Therrien's gone. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, and that's true too. You've seen some fans go, oh, okay. But I think it's easier to like Shea Weber because Shea Weber is Shea Weber. Adam Larson? Okay. Like he was never at that level, and I don't know if he ever will get to that level. No, I don't think that's the expectation. Did they overpay for Adam Larson? Yeah, they overpaid for Adam Larson. Period. End of story. Don't even argue it. Don't bother. Your team's still good, but don't bother. And they still get... And by the way, another thing for the Oilers is uh, Jesse Puglia-Yarvi. He's not on the team. He's in the AHL. Mashing it. Just killing it. Oh, my goodness. And then you add him to the team next year. That that cheap thing of the Hall trade was actually uh, Larson, Lucic, and Puglia-Yarvi for Hall. It's unfair. It's not how you look at it. And yet I look at the assets my team has, I look at the roster, and yes, that is absolutely how you look at it. It doesn't justify the trade at all. Mm -hmm. Not even a little bit. And I look at the team and there it is. They're in the playoffs, aren't they? Here's some more list stats. Cam Talbot, 9-4-1. With a uh, 925 save percentage in his last 14 st- uh, wow, starts. Wow, we've him. forgotten about him. He's Dreisaitl has 16 points in his last 15 games. 
He's so good. And the team has the highest uh, power play percentage since February 14th at 35.3%. Wow! Second place, uh, the Devils sit at 29. Oh, sh- oh, okay. Well, hopefully that that falls in the toilet Yeah. in the next couple days. <laughs> Leafs still have the number one power play in the league, though, right? Yes. Wow. Which is weird to say. And they're still up there with like most first period goals in the league, too. Uh, shout out to our German listeners. Leon Dreisaitl um, just set a record for um, uh, most points in a season by a German player. <laughs> That's amazing. Buffalo just passed us, actually, for uh, best power play. Oh, okay. Well, we can... Buffalo? Yeah, 24% leaves are at 23%. You know why? Uh, someone posted a chart... Uh, I think it was since Jack Eichel's return from injury, he's 10th mm. in the NHL in scoring. Wow. Oh, <laughs> like, if you just take into account... Full season, from when he's going to be scary. Oh, so scary. Good. It's too bad the rest of the team isn't great. The rest of the team hasn't had Jack Eichel with them. Yeah, that's true. For a big chunk of the season. That I mean, I, yeah. Next year, I wonder... I look at the playoffs this year, and the, I go... Is the he, Atlantic's going to look completely it's different. It's going to look completely different, isn't it? Yeah, like it's Buffalo gonna be, should be better. They should be. Tampa will be much better, I think. Florida will be much better. Habs, who the hell knows? They'll get a full season of Julian. Sens, who the hell knows? Because this was a little bit unexpected. Leafs, I, I assume, will improve. Mm-hmm. And the Red Wings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it's looking more and more like, remember remember when the West was, well, for most of our lives, the Western Conference has been the big, scary conference. Yeah. Most of the Cups have gone West. It now seems like the East is the big, scary con- uh, conference. In the Atlantic, after having, like, a bit of an off year, like, I think the it's entirely possible that the standings look similar next year with the Metro having a few monsters in the Atlantic, not so much. But I think that might be because the Atlantic is tighter. Right. There's a lot more... Many, like, many more good teams. There's six teams. I wouldn't be shocked if they made the playoffs next year. And six Detroit. out of seven. And Detroit. <laughs> Detroit. Oh, this is weird. This is uncharted territory. No LA, no Detroit. Weird. But like, at least LA like will stay in the conversation for like another year or two. And they did miss the playoffs, what, two years ago? Man, but they can't score yeah, that was goals. Weird. Yeah. They can't score goals. Well... Like, well, if Anze Kopitar picks it up next year, then all of a sudden I think it's a different world. But Anze Kopitar, what does he have, five? LA's in a very strange like position. ridiculously small. Because, like, they can't really sell. Like, they got a lot of guys locked in. Dude, they have Jeff Carter for, like, six more the years. The better part of the next decade, yeah. Uh, not that he's the problem. So you're okay with keeping him. Okay, fine. I don't know how you get rid of Dustin Brown. You're not going to get rid of Drew Doughty. You're not going to get rid of Jake Muzzin. You're not going to get rid of Enzi Kopitar. I think they're they're a rebuilding, uh, a retooling, retooling. team. Sorry, because they have the major players locked up. Yeah, they're not they're not far off from being okay. I think yeah, Kopitar back up to where Kopitar normally is. They need a full season to quick, and they need quick to be good. Fair enough. We'll see. Um, so let's talk about the top twenty RFA's going into twenty seventeen. Jesse, did you have something you wanted to add? You're looking like maybe you did. No, no, no. Okay. Cool. Uh, Michael Granlin, $3 million this year. Uh, RFA. Really? Okay. Uh, he has the most points of any RFA. Uh, 19 minutes a night. He's playing with the Wild, 25 years old. And basically, I mean, they've, their other centers are Miko Koivu and Eric Stahl. He's a center, eh? And he's a number one, probably. Oh, well, he's not coming to Toronto. No, but he's in the money, isn't he? RFA. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, RFA, though. He's got 25 That's... goals and 41 assists. RFA. 25. They're, RFA. At this point, they're trying to buy into his UFA years. So I feel like he's going to get money. I think we're looking at 6-7. I think we're yep. looking at 6-7. And I think that's fair. I think it's fair money. Boy, boy. Uh, David Pasternak, 21 years old. Oh, my God. <laughs> 31 goals and 32 assists. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going to get caked. Well, here's the problem. <laughs> Okay, so um, Bruins don't have a ton of cap space next year. The comparables to David Pasternak are Tarasenko, <laughs> Monaghan, McKinnon, Forsberg, Sagan, and Schwartz. He's getting paid. But that's different because you're not buying UFA years. He's so young. He's 21. He might. You might. You might want to. Like, Tarasenko's on an eight-year deal. So you bought a good chunk of his UFA years, right? Mm. He's 23, eight years. 
You buy under 30. 21. Because of how... Sorry, Tarasenko is 21. Or 23. Pasternak's 21. Yeah. But if you wanted to buy him till he was 28, that's two UFA but years, because right? Because of how cash-strapped they are, yeah. I wonder if they attempt something like what they did with Subban and Kadri, where they do like a two-year, very cheap... Yeah. But you're... The thing about those deals is you pay for them. You pay for them later. Well, is it worth it? Because Subban so. makes nine million a year now. It's not. Was it worth it? No. Was it worth it? They could have just done six. Well, and... they're not paying them, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was a hundred percent worth it. I guess. <laughs> I guess it's true. If Sean Monahan, twenty-one years old, six point three seven five million a year. If I'm David Pasternak, I'm going. That's, I, a, that's I, a decent comparison. I think that's a fair comparison. Tarasenko's different. He's a winger. Um, and I well, so I guess Pasternak? Pasternak, yeah, he is. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe Tarasenko is the better option. Seven point well, five million. I don't know, man. <laughs> and maybe because he's not a center that hu- that hurts him. I don't know what Jaden Schwartz is, but I know Sagan, Forsberg, McKinnon, Mon- Monahan. I believe they're well, all. Well, Sagan's deal, like, oh my god, such, it's a, such sweetheart a sweetheart deal. deal. Yeah, not even six mil. So ridiculous. He signed the deal when he was twenty years old. By the way, Tarasenko is not twenty three anymore. Ta- Tyler Sagan t- signed that deal when he was twenty years old. Six years, he gets five point seven five every year. He signed one of those very strange deals that was right before the lockout. Oh. And really? I don't understand why. All right. Uh, Ryan Johansson, in, who's only 24 in Nashville. Wow. Uh, $4 million this year. He has 12 goals and 43 assists. Well, not a bad season. Probably want him to have more money. Uh, but they've got him between Philip Forsberg and Victor Arvidsson, so that's probably why his assists are so much. But maybe that's why Arvidsson's doing so well. Ar- Arvidsson's been amazing. He's a pretty good player. Would you put Johansson in the four to five million, or would you put him up in the six million? At least six. I'd Le- say at least six. Leon Dreisaitl, and this is going to be a problem for the Oilers. Leon oh. Dreisaitl is the first of their young crop to now hit this. We're done our rookie year. He's twenty one. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl has 24 goals and 41 assists this year. The, wow! You, you know what? Can I just say wow? It, the Oilers' young crop, like Yakupov is kind of the grocery stick. There was the the before Yakupov young crop, and most of them got their money. And now there's the post-Yakupov young crop. And yeah, I guess he's the first one. Well, you've got McDi- McDavid's up next year. Oh, just sign him now. Just like what's the max? Take what, it. What do you? What do Take you want? It. What do you want? Fill in your number. He knows that. Bo Horvat. He's in no rush. Twenty goals, twenty-seven assists on a not so good Vancouver team. He's making just below the rookie maximum. Uh, he's up. Twenty-two years old. I might have already said that. Center. What do you think? Four to five. No. Yeah. Okay. On a shorter deal. And I think that the Canucks could afford Justin Schultz. It's still only 26. Dude, 1.4 mil. Are you joking me? Making 1.4 mil. He has 12 goals and 35 assists this year. Now, there is the argument. His shooting percentage for a defenseman is a little high, 9%. Not bad. I think it's 8% is the regular. I don't know what it, sh- what it should be for defensemen. But he's playing on the Pittsburgh Penguins, the high-flying Pittsburgh yeah, Penguins. Yeah, don't be dumb. Is he... Is he, Are his numbers benefiting from the team he's playing with? Well, yeah. Or is he actually a very good defenseman? I think it's both. Um, I think, I think, don't be dumb. Dude, you're with Crosby. You're with Malkin. Take it. Take You got it. 100 points. Season's not even done. Probably going to have a decent playoff run unless you get screwed by the fact that you're in the Metro. Stay. Couple more years. Stay. Stay two more years. Stay. And like you're going to get, you're going to get a payday. You're going to more than double your salary and still take a team friendly deal. Mm hmm. And like Justin Schultz, three million, pretty, pretty reasonable. He more than doubles his salary. Take it and Just stay in Pittsburgh. If dude. you if you do two more years, that puts him at twenty eight, which is prime age to get a big fat long term deal. Yeah, and then you know with a lot of money, then you, you evaluate which direction Pittsburgh's going. Maybe I want to go somewhere else. I I think sign two or three more years in Pittsburgh. Stick around. Evgeny Kuznetsov, only twenty four. He had a rough season, didn't he? Well, he's making three million. He's coming off of a um, a twenty goal season. He's sixteen goals, thirty seven assists. Mm, mm, mm. That's good. That's good. Fifty three points this year. Maybe not by cap standards. Spoiled brats. So three million he's <laughs> making. What do you put him to? 
There's another one. This is the problem because the caps have the caps are squeezed. Are they a little cap strapped? I would say. <laughs> <laughs> There's another guy who I think makes at least five. Galch in Montreal is up. 23 years old. He makes $2.8 million. Um, that could be a rough discussion. Well, he's only got 15 goals and 25 assists this year. Now, fair enough, Michel Therrien has bounced him around. Yeah. But it doesn't seem like Montreal's and a he fit was for hurt. him. And he was hurt. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be a very... They got two very difficult negotiations coming up. They got him and Radulov. What's that going to be like? Uh... I get the feeling Galch might get screwed a little bit and have to settle for it. Like, he's better than a $4 million player, I think. But I think he'll get somewhere around there, four, four and a half. But he's going to ask for way more than that. Well, I think his request, mark, mark this down. When it comes out, his request will be at least six. Mark Dumont tweeted... At Mark P. Dumont on uh, Twitter. I had a sandwich with him once. He said, how much will Galchenyuk make on his next contract average over the course of the years? So he had the options. Five, five plus, six plus, 6.5 plus, 7 million plus. So most he doesn't people, even have four. <laughs> no, most people think 6.5 million. I don't think it's terribly far off. But if he's <sighs> making 6.5, he's a center. Right. Don't move him. He's the center. You know who else is up? Who? Jonathan Druant. What an interesting negotiation. He has, he had a great playoff last year. Uh, we'll see if he's able to have a great one this year. Uh, for some reason, I can't bring him. Ah, 17 goals, 27 assists. Uh, not mind blowing. I don't know if he was ever hurt. Not mind blowing. He's played 62 games, so I think he was probably hurt for a, a little bit. Tampa was hurt. 14 points in 17 playoff games, though. Tampa has not been great this year. Not. The team that we know Tampa should if the, be. If the playoff run is fresh, take the money and run. But it's not. It's not. Unless Tampa makes it, which they still could. But, dude, he's got 44 points in 62 games this year. Regular season. Like, if we're talking playoff production, I think Tampa goes, we can barely factor that in. That was two years ago. No, no, no. no. This year. This I, season, though. No, no, I'm looking, I'm looking at that season. I think he does a shorter... Three and a half, okay, sort of deal, because, dude, Tampa's so uh, Tampa's so strapped. Even though they dumped a couple contracts, aren't they still? They've locked their core up for a very long time. I think they want Joanne to be part of that, but I don't know if they can afford to do it. I think he kind of missed that boat a little bit, a little bit. I don't well, know. It's that's tough. He's definitely part of their core. I don't know. I don't Colton Pareko uh, in St. Louis. Uh, has been pretty good. Uh, skates about what I think it's twenty minutes a night, so big big minutes. His shooting percentage right now is at two point five percent. I feel bad for Sounds him. So bad. he's got four goals this year, twenty eight assists. Still not bad. Uh, you know who's got almost identical numbers to that? Morgan uh, Riley. I was going to say Nikita Zaitsev. Oh, okay. Who's a rookie? Yeah. So what do you pay a guy that that can do that? And who you expect probably is going to score a few more goals next year. So you're asking me, what do the Leafs pay Nikita Zaitsev? Great question, Adam. Uh, yeah, he's 24, actually. So is Nikita Zaitsev. So, yeah. God, that's going to be such a god-awful contract discussion. Is he right-handed? Zaitsev is. Doesn't say. Doesn't say? Let's say he's right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> At least four. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I say at least four. But another, for how long? Another Tampa player. The amount of money depends on the amount of years. Mm-hmm. Andre Palat is up. $3.33 million. Left winger, 25 years old. If he can stay healthy, he's capable probably of 60 to 65 points. This year in 63 games, 14 goals and 23 assists. So about 40 points. Five. Five million? I think so. For a left wing. Okay. I don't think he gets it. I think that's at, around where the negotiations start. Yeah. Well, here's the other problem. How Tyler, do you keep the triplets together? Tyler Johnson's also up at his $3.33 million. Uh, he, this year, has been uh, not 25, almost 20 goals, 25 assists. Hurt for a couple. Center. You know Center. what? Maybe I give the five to him. Maybe I say he's five. Tampa's got... Man, we're going to see how much of a cyborg Stevie Y is. This summer, he has he has maneuvered beautifully. 
we'll see if he can keep this together. I've been watching in admiration of him. Uh huh. Because the Leafs were bad for so long. Uh-huh. Now I'm like, okay, I would really like him to misstep once or twice. <laughs> that would really help help <laughs> everything. Our case. Thomas Tatar in Detroit is up. Now Detroit's an interesting case because we're not sure what Detroit is. Detroit's not sure what Detroit is. I am. They're bad. Oh, like like what kind of team they are. Do you trade an RFA okay. like Thomas Tatar? He's 26. You don't really have a window with him. So why not? He's probably value as, valuable as an RFA if a team can get a deal done. I think you see how the negotiation goes. Right? I don't think he can command a king's ransom. He's a winger, right? Right wing? I want to say. Left wing. Left wing. Average about Option. 20 goals a year. We'll see, you see how it goes. Uh, I don't think you give a guy like that... F- Five million per. If you're a team like the Red Wings, mm-hmm. maybe if you're another team, uh, if you ask for somewhere in the neighborhood of four, four and a half, think about it. That's a good player. Just a couple, qu- a couple more that are up. Uh, Winneberg in um, Columbus is up. Uh, yeah, that was very interesting. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, Arvidsson, you wanted to go through the rapid fire. Victor and I'm like, Arvidsson, yeah. Ar- Victor Arvidsson in Nashville is up. RFAs are so hard to predict. They are, and Arvidsson's been amazing this Real year. good. Uh, Connor Sheary, left winger for the Pittsburgh Penguins. There's another guy. Just take what they give you, man. 20 goals, 27 you play on assists. Crosby's wing. Are you stupid? Take it. Shane Goss, just be here. Shane Goss, the ghost bear is up. Another extremely interesting negotiation. Rookie of the year, healthy scratch. 24 years old. 24 years old. Me, oh, sorry. Question. Me, yeah, yeah. How many of these guys end up in uh, Las Vegas? None. None? None. They're all too good. Okay. They'll trade other players. Yeah, their teams will do whatever. So the uh, projected Vegas teams that we've seen, Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. They're going to be way worse than that. (laughs) Way worse than that. Uh, Did you want to transition to something else? No, I want to keep going because there's a... Oh, okay. Remind me about expansion teams. Mika Zabinajad is also up in New York, 24 years old, $2.65 million, back-to-back 20 goal campaigns. See, I don't know what the cap situation is of all these teams. Robin Leonard up in Buffalo. You know they're going to keep him. They gave up a first round pick to get him, and he's been, you know, pretty good this year. He's had his rough moments. They could get a decent deal out of him if you get him for like four, mm-hmm. which I think is attainable. He's the number one goalie. Yeah, if you could lock him up long term for four per, it could actually be a pretty decent deal. And El Nino Niederreiter. Is up in, in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota's got some interesting things, and he's been uh, he got twenty goals and twenty eight assists this year. So that's a that's a top six player, right? Mm-hmm. In this this NHL, you didn't mention any Leafs. I didn't. Got to feel well. Nikita so Zaitsev's good. there, but and Connor Brown is also up, and Zach Hyman is also up. So, but none of those like I think all those players get raises, but like really that much. And also, I like, think Zaitsev gets three and a half, don't you? Three and a half to four. Um, right-handed, so maybe closer to four. Hyman? Like, that's a weird negotiation, too. Like, well, you think I'm valuable enough that you played me with Matthews all year. Yeah, but you didn't score very much. Hmm. Connor Brown, very <laughs> useful player, not exactly a dynamo. A couple million? So you give these guys, oh yeah, I'd say at least a couple of million. So these guys, it'll be interesting to see how it all works out because these guys will get raises, but if you take out rookie bonuses, like will their cap hit actually be less? I don't know. Good question. Maybe Brown, probably not Hyman. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe I don't know what Brown's rookie bonus is that he that he's going to reach this Me year, neither. but he might yeah. get two million dollars just with the bonuses. Matthews, Matthews, Nylander, and Marner are essentially hitting everything. Good. Everything. Good. There is problem to have. There's a weird bonus that Marner gets. I think it's like two hundred grand or something for hitting at least point seven three points per game. And last night he clinched it. Oh, so if he oh, gets cool. if he gets no points for the rest of the season. He still averages that much, which is nuts because there's 11 games yeah. left. That's cool. He's good at hockey. He is a little <laughs> bit good at hockey. He plays 24 minutes a game. 27. <laughs> 27, apparently. Or, or something. No, was it 24? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 20,000 minutes a game. 
So I want to talk about some stuff that's that's not NHL related. First off, just he played up. in overtime and they didn't even need it. <laughs> we, sig- we dedicated a significant chunk to Thursday's episode last week to what's going on with the U.S. women's hockey program. That's Obviously, right. if you haven't heard, uh, they are boycotting the World Cup until further Still. notice. Yep. Now we do know they met. Earlier this week, and the hockey players themselves say the negotiations were productive. That is the word they used. Oh, that's good. So that is good. That is good. It started out to be very, and and we won't get into it too much because Jen Neal explains it so beautifully in the last episode. Check it out. It's like the first 40 minutes of the episode. Um, But the the divisive nature of the initial both sides was kind of like, oh, this is not coming together. With a word like productive, that seems like they are trying to work towards getting them into the World yes. Cup. Because and apparently the pool of 100 players outside of the World Cup team have also said, including under-18s, we're not going. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, why on earth would you go? I just no scab so, so dumb. And when did that happen? The meeting? the meeting, I believe, happened. Let me just verify that. Yesterday? Day before? Uh, they met on Monday. Monday they met, okay. And they met for more than 10 hours. Wow. Jesus. That's, that's I mean, that's good. Yeah. That's how you get stuff done. I would, I would rather asleep. them do that than meet for an hour and go, okay, well, we'll get back to you. And this needs to get done quickly. When's the tournament supposed to be? A week from now? I think so. Uh, March 31st, yeah. Um, you know, I want Canada to win in all situations, but I'm a sucker for a good story. Like, imagine, you know, U.S. gets what they want out of these negotiations. And then they get destroyed by Canada! <laughs> by Sweden! <laughs> no, no, no. And, no, they, and, and, and they, they win. win. Yeah. I mean, it's a, no. it'd be a great story. But I want Canada to Wait win. Wait a second. You, you're you Mr. Storyline. What do you mean you don't but, like that? No, they're when my no he's Mr. Your favorite. Team. Well, no, when my team's involved, I got to cheer for my team. Right. Your team's favorite. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I want to apologize to uh, folks who listened to that interview. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Seems like most of you did, and that would be because Jen Neal was very good. Uh, apparently, you could hear me eating my soup. <laughs> I thought I was far enough off mic. I was not, and I'm sorry. That's super, that's first time. duper unprofessional. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I hey, was listen, embarrassed. Are you lo- are you really lo- looking for professionals? I mean, You're coming to this show. I mean, I'm I mean, looking for not. Yeah, I guess. I can only imagine how many of the listeners have like misophonia or something, and we're just going no, <laughs> just losing their minds. Yeah, my bad. Now, I want to I want to ask you a question. Okay. How much do you know about the career of Ray Allen, the basketball player? Yeah. Uh, played for the Celtics. Played for the Celtics. He was like a pretty good clutch player, I think. Uh, it's funny that people associate him with the Celtics when he played longer with the Supersonics. That's right. He That's played right. Thank you. Supersonics. I knew that, but the they Bucks. don't exist anymore, so I forgot. Yeah, he played with the Bucks for, from 96 to 2003. Were they good? Uh, the Bucks nope. are never good. No. <laughs> um, I didn't think so. No, uh, I just know he... Didn't he win with Boston? Yes. He did. Okay. In 2008? I want to say yeah, that's, where that's Kevin why. Garnett yelled at the world. Anything is possible. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Great moment. Great moment. Now, oh, he also won with Miami. Yes, he did. Now, here's the interesting thing. At the time when he signed in Miami in 2012, it would be like leaving the top tier Toronto Maple Leafs to go to the top tier Montreal Canadiens. The two teams hated each other. LeBron, Chris Bosh. And uh, Dwayne, Wade. And Dwayne Wade had already, you know, all signed there. You know, where did, and five, and six, not and seven. <laughs> not yeah, not one, not not two. You know what I mean? But it ended up being two. But uh, <laughs> Ray Allen was like, okay, I can sign in Boston, or I can go to Miami. So he ch- decides to go to Miami. He rejected apparently a two-year, twelve million dollar offer from the Boston Celtics and accepted a three-year deal with the Miami Heat. Uh, and they only had a mid-level exception amount of money. Basically, he was being paid about $3 million a season to play with LeBron and Chris Yeah, Bosch. the fun wow. thing about that Miami team was that they would pay the three stars max. LeBron was actually making the least amount out of anybody of, out of those three guys, and then the rest of the team was making minimum for the But league. they all wanted to be there. But they all wanted to win those championships, with, which they got two of them. They were the Avalanche team that should have destroyed Worlds with Sackick, Forsberg, Forsberg, Solani, Korea, yeah. Tange and Hey Duke yeah. as your top six forwards. Oh my God! Should have been good. Should have been good. Didn't I? Don't think they had the goaltending. Do Still think they had. The goal I think they had. I want to say either was it? I want to say uh, David Abisher. 
I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. I don't remember. David Abisher. <laughs> so. Might this, have been Wa. I don't remember. This understandably pissed off some of the players that he played with in Boston. And it just came out yesterday. And this is where uh, this is why I need to bring this up. Um, because the Celtics are having a a party to celebrate their 2008 win. Uh, they won, and obviously Kevin Garnett, Rajon Rondo is going to be there. Uh, who else? Who else is on that team? There were some pretty like it was an amazing. Paul Pierce. Team. Uh, yep, Paul Pierce is on that team. Ray Allen, obviously. The problem is that everybody's invited except for Ray Allen. <laughs> the whole team, really? The whole team. Uh, That's so petty. Come on. So basically, he won. it says, <laughs> I'll read the article. Rajon Rondo and other members of the. won from him. He won with you. Rajon Rondo and other members of the 2008 Celtics are planning a party to celebrate the upcoming 10 year anniversary of their NBA title. For some reason, Rondo talked to the Rondo talked to the uh, the undefeated about how the party planning is coming along and indicated Ray Allen is not invited. Rondo told them. Uh, he asked a few other players from the 2000 team, 2008 team if Allen should be invited and received a no uh, from everybody. Apparently, Rondo and the others are still steaming about Allen's decision to sign in Miami in 2012. By the way, it's 2017. Did he win with the Heat? Yes. Yeah. He was right. Did he win with you? Yeah. He did right by you. <laughs> he was what? right Twice, and you're still not inviting him. so many years later. They won in 08, and then he left in 2012. Four years later. Now, they still had a chance in 08, but they were getting older. Yeah. Like, Allen was not the player he was for. Like, he was well past his prime. He brought a championship. He played with Jordan. Yeah. (laughs) He helped put a ring on your finger. Then he he left, won a ring there, and you're mad at him? Here's what Rajon Rondo had to say. And I believe, didn't Miami beat Boston in the playoffs? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to look Uh, it up. I... I feel know. like they did. It will be a very long story about that, but it is what it is. Rondo there said. There has to be more to it. I don't know a good analogy to put this in. I, it just wasn't the greatest separation. It wasn't the greatest thing that could have happened to us as a team, a bond. We were at war with those guys, Miami. Uh, to go with the enemy, that's unheard of in sports. Well, it's not so unheard of now, but it was. Da- or it's, it's damn near common say, now. What? <laughs> The mindset we had, the guys on our team, is you wouldn't do anything like that. It makes you question that series in the finals. Who were you for? You didn't bleed green? Uh, what? People, oh, shut up. People think we had messed up, uh, had a messed up relationship. It's not the greatest, uh, but it's just not just me. I called and reached out to a couple of other vets and asked them what they wanted to do with the situation, and they told me to stick with what we got, which is without Allen. Now, okay, can we look up where they played each other? There must have been a series that I'm forgetting here because I don't know my I don't know my basketball. I guess they played well. each other in the f- fine. I can never no, remember. No, how would they have done that? They're both in the East. Aren't they? Yeah, they're both in the East. So they must have anyway. So you want to know if Boston ever played Did they ever play Miami, Miami? in the playoffs? I'll look it up. Especially after Allen left, I want to know. Okay. What I know is Boston was very good, Miami was very good, and Ray John Rondo you. Really likes to hold a grudge. <laughs> uh, he won with you. He won with them. He was right. He was right. I uh, look. I get it. But it's been that long now. Get over it. In 20, 2011, 2012. So would he have been on the team? Yes, they he played, would have been on Boston at that point. They played the Celtics in the conference finals. And, and it's uh, a seven so, game. So series. they. So he Kevin Duranted it. Because that's what Kevin Durant did. They lost to. They lost to Golden State last year. He Kevin in, Durant in the conference it. finals, he and ke- then and then went and signed with the other team. He Kevin Duranted it if Kevin Durant had won, right? Ah, uh, I don't think Ray Allen was on the 11-12 team. It says twenty twelve. He signed with, um, so would have been that off season and after then, twenty. So would have been uh, yeah, after twenty twelve that season. Uh, so they never played. They never played in a playoff series because after that they didn't play the Celtics. No, but but he was on the Celtics when they played the Heat, right? Okay, so yeah, that's what Rondo's mad about. He's like, we went to war with these guys, and this summer you signed with them. Uh, And here's the thing: Kevin Durant did it, and and freaking okay, LeBron James left his hometown. LeBron James left his home freaking town and left and came back, and it was fine. Yeah, it was cool. Everything's gone. Everything's good. Did when he won last year? Did he erase that footnote? That giant? Oh no, traitor footnote. No. Uh, Yeah, I kind of think he did. I think rings do it. I yeah, I think if you ask anyone in Cleveland, they're cool. Yeah, they're cool now. They, they were mad at the time, but they're cool now. Yeah. Well, 
So yeah, he did the exact same thing uh, Kevin Durant did. And I, I wonder... Lost in Game 7, went to the other team. I wonder what, what could compel you to be that mad. It's got to be more than just he left. It has to be. What if Ray Allen's a dick? Well, he's he had some, be. there's been some, uh, <laughs> him and Dwayne Wade versus, uh, Jimmy Butler in, in Chicago this year. It has not been a harmonious year in Chicago it's for the very, Bulls. It's interesting the behind the scenes, who's a dick stories that you hear. I've heard a few ones recently of beloved hockey players who like, and again, I never met them. So it's, I can't, I'm just going on secondhand information, but they go, yes, yeah, so-and-so's a dick and all his teammates hated him all of them all of them what yeah they still talk shit about him what it's it's pretty shocking i wonder if ray allen's that guy or maybe ray john rondo's that guy or maybe ray john rondo maybe the entire boston Celtics are that that guy i don't know i just seems like a long time to hold a grudge for a guy listen it had been four years since you'd won you won and you had won I don't know. Maybe Boston fans are probably going, you don't understand, man. You're a Celtic. You're a Celtic. <sighs> that is that is something I've heard people talk about. I think it was Jay Leno on Joe Rogan's podcast. It was an interesting conversation about Boston where you could have been, your family could have been from Boston for several generations, but you're still not from Boston, even though you were born and raised there and your parents were born and raised there. It wasn't like your great grandparents weren't born and raised there. When you leave Boston... It is generally seen as like a betrayal. So it sounds like a gigantic leak. Kind of. <laughs> but they win a lot. <laughs> they do win What's a lot. What's your fucking problem? God, God Pick bless your sport. Them. What's your so, sport? <laughs> we got our championships. Got in football, <laughs> hockey, <laughs> baseball, basketball. Sorry, what? <laughs> if Leafs lose to the Canadians, seven games, Nazem Kadri's in a UFA. He leaves, he goes, signs with the Canadians. Is it okay that nobody forgives them? Ever? For doing that? Oh, I would... As a fan, it's okay. I'd forgive him after his what retirement. If, I would hate him for the rest of his playing career. What yeah. if Bozak says, I'm, I can never talk to Kadri ever again? Then I go, what's wrong and with I'm you, not yeah. going to invite it's him to my pool party. It's a business. Like, like, you're a freaking on. turkey. <laughs> yeah, don't be a turkey. Also, I haven't forgiven Vince Carter yet, and I don't understand why the city of Toronto is so willing to forgive Vince Carter. That guy was a jackass on the way out. What an asshole. You want to talk about a very strange relationship for a city to have with a player. Mm -hmm. His impact on the sport in the city and country is undeniable. But why are we pretending like he wasn't a huge baby on his way out? Oh, yeah. And and fucked us. Completely Mm -hmm. fucked us. Fucked the team. For years. Now, you could argue that the team fucked him. No, you couldn't. My favorite story... Was uh, there was a draft where he was like, please, 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 do not draft this guy. And the Raptors drafted you know, specifically that guy, you know, Rafael Arujo. <laughs> oh, you know who the you know who, who else he didn't want them to draft? Who? Chris Bosh. Well, he was okay. Listen, I'm not who saying who would the other option have been. I that don't was know. that was the monster draft. That was that the was, year where everybody won. Yeah, that was Le- LeBron, Melo, Wade, Bosh. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I don't. There's one guy in between there. The Lakers guy. I forget who. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Some guy. Really? Yeah. Wasn't Bosch fourth? I think no, he was fourth. Hold on, I'll, I'll bring it up. I don't listen. It's it, I. I think when a when a star player s- tries to tell a team how to trade, no, uh, no. Well, well. Like, are we going to pretend like Kessel, like Crosby, didn't have a little bit of influence on Kessel becoming a Penguin? I don't know. Did he? That's that's the assumption. Darko Milicic. Went to the uh, Detroit Pistons Thank second God. overall after oh. LeBron James, and then Carmelo, and then Chris Bosh, and then Dwayne Wade. So <sighs> Dwayne Wade would have been pretty sweet. Dwayne Wade would have been pretty great. Yeah, um, but like I mean, you're not gonna always. I mean, if if your consolation prize is Chris Bosh, I think you're okay. He was great here. Mm-hmm. He was. Wow. I I just I feel like I. I I, I'm not ready. I know there was this big campaign recently, not by MLSE, but by media organizations, specifically TSN, to bring Vince Carter back into the fold. And wow, he had such a great effect. And we, uh, we got well, trim. Like, we got him, uh, Charles Barkley, and uh, sorry, Charles Oakley, and Tracy McGrady. Oh my God, what a great team! And Tracy McGrady's like, yeah, you know, if I'd stuck with it, I think we would have won a championship. Wow. Tracy, you walked out on us. Yeah. You walked out on us and you were 21 and we gave you all the chance he in the was? world and you yeah, he was 21. I don't know how that Shoot. worked. 
But he, he wouldn't sign here. He wouldn't share the spotlight with Carter. It was his cousin. His cousin. Yeah. It's his they fucking didn't cousin. Want to share the no, man, that was bullshit on both of them. Yeah. And I, I think it's sort of gross that that we, we've done this PR job. I sp- like, listen, but has enough time passed? I don't care. They they acted wrongly. They, they helped. They well, act- maybe not McGrady so much, but Carter helped build the Raptors. He built the Raptors. He still holds the most iconic moment in Raptors history. It wasn't even in a fucking game. No. <laughs> no. The only thing that's going to top that is if they win. You're, that's how iconic I that sure moment is. The only win. thing that's going to top it is if they win. But but, but to be and fair, it will only be the biggest moment in Toronto. Outside, it'll still be the dunk. Yeah, because that's the biggest moment in NBA All Star history. Period. Yeah. Period. Mm, what about Jordan? That too. Uh, oh, that too. I guess he, yeah. that, they put that on every shoe. shoe. Yeah. yeah okay. Thing. Fair. I mean, a couple. Of fair. Them. Yeah. 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 Um, but like, I, I feel like I, I don't <laughs> what about know. Jordan? I just have a. I, <laughs> I like we're not that upset and I guess the reason I brought it up is we're not that upset about Vince Carter Celtics still pissed off about Ray Allen <laughs> mm, uh, I, I you know what, what I mean it's just Ron comes across as a big baby he does yeah. he does but you know what how does I, big baby feel about <laughs> I don't know um, I also want to play for you this um, there's a South African Premier League player named Mohamed Anas in he, what, he in won what man of the match he had two goals soccer um, yep yeah, soccer uh-huh. South African Premier League <laughs> Uh, and he had a real, I mean, scoring two goals yourself in one game is amazing. I want you to hear his, uh, his speech after the game. He had a little talk to the press. You ready? Got the, got the pucks in deep. And I appreciate my fans also. My wife and my girlfriend, I mean my wife, yeah, sorry to say, I'm so, I'm so sorry, my wife. Listen, I love you so much. I I love you so much from my heart. So, must keep on supporting me and thanks for, for the time. All right, let's play that one more time. What did he say? I appreciate my fans also. My wife and my girlfriend. I uh, mean, my wife. Yeah. Ah! So if you missed that. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> we'll oh, all no! All time. Silence in the room. And I uh, appreciate my fans also. My wife and my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry to say. Scored two goals. My wife and my girlfriend, I'd like to thank you. <sighs> Sounds like he did oh. score two goals, but oh. how did he do in the game? <laughs> hey, now. Here we go. Hey. How hey. amazing is that? that that's awesome. Oh. Oh. Wow. Was that a slip of the tongue or uh. a slip of the tongue? Oh, you. Oh, that's bad. Uh. That was awesome. Um, What's I did? your... Okay. All right. So you're a total shithead and you're fucking around on your wife. Yes. Okay. You're a total shithead athlete. Okay. <laughs> And, and, and you don't have to be an athlete to be a shithead, by the way. Everybody does. Yes. Not everybody does. Sorry. All walks of life can be shitheads. There you go. What do you do after that? Do you do you say to your wife, it was a slip? Like, how do you speak to her? What do you say? Is it a slip of the tongue? Is it, listen, you knew anyway? Or is it something you don't acknowledge? You hope she didn't see it? What do you, what do, you do? How do you react? You've just had a great game, the game of your life, and you screwed it up in the interview. What do you say? If I'm him, I probably try to frame it as... I just played this crazy game, and I was panting, and and I just I accidentally said it. I just own up to it. There's no hiding from it now. Oh no! Yeah, you told the whole like, country. I want to thank my wife and my girlfriend. You oh, were definitely thinking, and my oh, you fucked up so hard, sir. Man of the match. Oh, don't you wish you didn't try so hard that game? <sighs> Jesse that sucks. What would you do? Oh yeah, you man up. He's man up. Yeah. Go back in time and not cheat. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and uh, lastly, before we get to the press conference, there's a couple, a couple things I want to bring up. Did Do you we bring have a Liberty the Village? From, uh, Tampa? I did not. I'm then bringing those no, Thursday. No Liberty. Can I bring on my number? My stat thing? Oh, sure. Your bring? stat, but I've got something else too. Okay. But you bring over your stat. Serious? Do your stat. No, sounds serious. Not serious. It sounds a little bit serious. Okay. So uh, I was looking up some things last night around two in the morning uh, because that's when I look up hockey stats. Um, this year's Colorado Avalanche are very bad. I don't know if you guys know that. Very bad. Uh, they currently have a goal differential, and I can't remember how many games they have left. Okay. Oh, it's either... Is it 11 games left? I think they have 11 games left. Their goal differential is minus 96. Minus 96. And 11 I went, games. 11 games left. The record... For the worst goal differential in the cap era was the McEichel Sabres of two years ago. 
Three years ago now, I guess. Minus 113. Ooh. There's 11 games left. Can the Avalanche do it? <laughs> Can they do it? We got to watch this. We got to follow this. What's the what's the non-cap record? Uh, supposedly, uh, someone tweeted it at me. It was like the 74-75 Capitals, and it was like... It was unfathomable. It was like minus two sixty. Yeah, that's the expansion capitals. Yeah, it, unfathomable. Like just unbelievable. But I was looking at some of the ones in recent memory when when goalie pads were made out of leather and feathers. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I skipped a few, but here are some of the real bad ones. So this year's uh, Avalanche are minus ninety six. Sabers were minus one hundred and thirteen in two thousand fourteen fifteen. The o three o four Penguins. So the pre. Malkin and Crosby Penguins. This team allowed the Penguins to draft Malkin. Minus 113. Ooh. The 2001-2002 Atlanta Thrashers. Minus 101. And wonder how bad Vegas is going to be next year. The Expansion Thrashers. 99-2000. Negative. 143. Ooh. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Lord. <laughs> but, God... Again, the trying desperately to suck Sabres might be caught by the, hey, we thought we were all right, Avalanche. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That is, I don't know if we've seen a season like this in a long time. I don't think we have. I don't think we have. What did you want to say, Adam? I want to ask a question. Oh, dear. See, and I wonder if I'm not shooting myself in the foot asking this oh, question, but I'm going to ask this question. He's getting serious, everybody. He's what getting- is it? Nowadays, when I see, and I, and I, like, here's the thing. When you do your videos, Steve, on YouTube, you back them up with facts. There's some opinion. There's some facts. There's some things that you have to say, observations, right? People have latched on to your stuff. I don't know what it is about today and in this world, but for some reason, we don't trust the people that are paid to give us actual facts, Mm. but we're so willing to trust random dude on YouTube with channel. And I'm not trying to say that I'm not, I'm not coming at you for that. I'm coming at the people that watch Alex Jones and thinks that think that's real. What? Uh, the people Adam, that he's watch got hot blood running Tommy, through his veins. Tommy Lauren and think that's real. You know, uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's just people editorializing. Well, a lot and, of, a lot of very tiny violins were purchased yesterday, by the way. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh. It's not racism; it's conservatism. Anyway, oh. um, I I want to know. Sorry. I want to know for all the positivity YouTube has brought, right? Because uh, here's the thing: YouTube has brought us all together. Everybody listening to this show all found it through the Steve Dangle podcast, uh, not through the YouTube channel, so through the Steve Dangle YouTube channel. It should be called us tube. It should be called Steve Tube. We tube, maybe. Maybe. It's gross. But at the same time... Ew. There's, ah, you're right. Ah, that name would never stick. There's a lot of ancient aliens-esque conspiracy bullshit out there about mm. the Rockefellers, the Illuminati, and the Earth being flat, which is leading people like Kyrie Irving and now Shaq, Shaq. to claim the Earth is flat. Explain this one to me. That's the one you gotta live with. This is true. You know, some people yeah. like it, some people don't, but, you know, we'll see where it takes us. What did you make of the Kyrie stuff? I don't. It's, it's true. The the the, the, what? Uh, the Earth is flat. Shaq, what are you talking about? <laughs> the Earth is flat. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's yes, not. Yes, it is. This is a great no, debate. Listen, it's not. There's three ways to manipulate the mind: what you read, what you see, and what you hear. <laughs> okay. Conspiracy. In school, first thing they teach us is, "Oh, Columbus discovered America." But when he got there, it was some uh, uh, fair-skinned people with the long hair smoking out of peace pipes. So what does that tell you? Mm -hmm. Columbus didn't discover America. (laughs) He found where some other people already lived. I drive from coast to coast, and this is flat to me. (laughs) I'm just saying. (laughs) Okay, that's the dumbest thing you've ever said. I drive from Florida. It's the dumbest thing you've ever said. I drive from Florida to California. This is on Shaq's podcast, so you got to think. If you're on Shaq's podcast, Shaq's paying you to be there. I good on that guy to say that's the dumbest thing you've ever said. There's so many things, and like it, it's not. We just, can keep going. There's another minute. Do we want to keep going, or we just leave? Go ahead. No, 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 no. No, no. He doesn't get no. He's got his own podcast to share his own stupid fucking ideas on. <laughs> We're not, it's our podcast with our stupid fucking, fucking ideas. That's right. <laughs> that's I, right. I just find it funny, you know, that 
that it, it's so much easier for people to trust random dude on internet, which is literally like it's it's not as Steve your facts the facts that you pull from are readily readily available yeah. people can go and they can verify those facts these people with these conspiracy things on the internet are posting blatantly wrong scientific things and there are people that go yep must be do we know that is readily available information do we know that the earth isn't flat you're yes, right. you're right. We, you know what? I don't have Chris yes. Hadfield's eyes. I wasn't with him. Have you been to space? No. Have you, Adam? I have not been to space. Ben. And you know what? I've met Chris Hadfield, and he's definitely Illuminati. If I'm the Illuminati, that's the guy I'm picking. What did he smell like? I bet it was sulfur. It, no. Yeah, yeah. Friendly Canadian guy with mustache who likes David Bowie. That's the guy I want in the Illuminati. That's the guy I'm spe- sending to space. No one will know. Dude. No, here's... Okay, so I don't know much about Jack... <laughs> Mr. O'Neill. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the movie he made? Kazam? Shazam. Oh, Kazam. Yeah, it was Kazam. Mr. Kazam. I don't know much about Mr. Kazam. <laughs> um, he doesn't seem like a bad guy to me. The first part of his answer is so tragic. It was tragic to me because I don't think it's that he read some random guy on the internet. Kyrie Irving, I think, did. I think, okay, it might have been. They looked up some random shit on the internet, but it's a mistrust of the educational system. And there's so many parts of the world, and I and I hate to pick on the states. And I, you heard the defeat in Jen Neal's voice when she was on her show. She's like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, you speak to most Americans. Like, it's not like, yeah. Like, like when it comes to sports, they fly the flag and have sparkling eagles all over the place. But generally speaking, they're like, "We're sorry. We're sorry for being." Um. The education is, it's so bad in parts, you know, in so many huge swaths of the States. Canada's not immune. What people love to go, to say is shit happens in Canada too. And I'm like, I know, I know. And you know Can what? Can you at least ad- admit it's real bad there? I want to know what school Shaq went to. <laughs> Cause I think Shaq went to the school of he's tall and playing basketball. Yeah. Like I know, like, Which oh is- yeah, the, my favorite thing from the Kyrie Irving thing was, uh, oh, what, what school did he go to? And I'm like, yeah. I'm sure he like paid a lot of attention in all those classes. That's why that's the NCAA tournament makes me laugh, because I, I didn't realize it was only Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Because yeah. the kids got to be in class you during March Monday, Madness. You take Monday oh, to Wednesday to go to class. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah. You're right. You're for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Like, no, I, I feel bad. Like, uh, they, I, there's got to be some kind of reason that I don't grasp, uh, why they don't trust the educational system. And then you hear about things like, there's a lot of really fucked up things going on in the world right now. There's a lot of really fucked up things going on in the States right now. But when I heard, like, and I said this before even the election, and we had that giant podcast talking about the election, I think the biggest problem, or one of the biggest problems, is education. It's so bad, and they just cut it, and they just put this, f- literally some fucking lady, just some fucking lady, in charge of Bridge education. Lady. Yeah. Betsy DeVos, DeVos, whatever. They just put some random fucking lady. The reason I think education is such a huge problem is because if that is poor, if education is bad, what chance do you have of bettering yourself? You have a lack of knowledge in your head. There's other ways to get smart. You don't need school to get smart necessarily. But we're we're talking about children here. We're talking about a base. And you're screwing them out of a strong base. And I'm not saying we have the best base. Believe me, I would rather graduate with a better knowledge of how taxes work than like all the parts of a cell. <laughs> Stupid. All the all the stuff that I didn't retain. Yeah, but you know what? And then I think about that and I'm like, you know what? Some students really excelled at chemistry and now they work at a pharmacy and I go there every that, time my back hurts. That's, Good, but that's then where they you put them in a pharmacy. Oh no, no, well, or they're a doctor. <laughs> there you or go. Or they're a doctor oh, or you. a nurse. Or... I'm sorry to all the actual chemists out there who just put. Steve well, I didn't want to be uh, unrealistic. At Shoppers Drug Mart. <laughs> you know what? They started Steve the pharmacy. Didn't want to be unrealistic. <laughs> that is so. They you. Don't, well, no, because that's so you. No, by the because way. I know. Oh, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh yeah, they all became doctors. Everyone who got an 80 in chemistry became a doctor. Fuck you, Dangle. What do you know? Hockey, you fucking chump. They're all working with you know? cash at Rexall. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, and there's nothing wrong with working Would cash you like at Rexall Mentos? because I worked cash at Shoppers Drug Mart for many years. Yeah. And um, Adam is but... a certified pharmaceutical professional. <laughs> you, you couldn't be a doctor. No, no that's, that's no. too weird. No, but here's the thing. I What scares <laughs> it's me. It's not just some random fuck at a pharmacy. Think, uh, anyway. Here's what's scary to me. 
Shaq's logic for why the earth is flat is because he's driven across the country. That is the same logic that the Pope, when he put Galileo under house arrest, used. Yeah. Oh, well, it looks flat, so therefore it must be. That's 600-year-old mm. logic to many thousands of years ago. By the way, the Greeks apparently figured it out, too. They figured out the earth was a circle. Uh, uh, or a we sphere. We don't know that. Yeah, a flat circle, like a yeah. pita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the images? What do you mean? Of the, of the flat circle earth that we live on. Yeah, that we're like living in a, is it The flat circle earth thing is hilarious because it's like, aren't you like, you're in yeah. like, aren't we like in a gully or something? Like, yeah. it's like we're it's, in the lowest curved. part. It's like a bowl. It's an inside. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here. okay, here's, so I do <laughs> actually, flat. I do an uncomfortable amount of thinking about this stuff because I drive a lot. This wrecks my day normally when this comes up. No, I think about it. And, and here was the breakthrough I had recently that made me feel better. Does Shaq have kids? Yes. Yeah. Shaq's rich. Shaq's kids go to a good school. Shaq's kids think the world is round. Okay, great. So I don't give a fuck what he thinks. His offspring think otherwise. They think the right way. Good. Now there's all these YouTube channels. My favorite recent one was Dinosaurs Aren't Real. These people with these videos, and even worse, the people who comment on these videos... Just, they might as well have their balls in storage. There's no, who's ever going to have kids with these people? Lots of people. Oh, for the love of God, no. Please, no. I've... Please, no. They don't seem like candidates. They don't seem like good candidates. I, no one who has had a healthy love life goes, fuck it, I'm dedicating my life to the dinosaurs are fake. You're harboring under the assumption that most people have a healthy love life. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. What I'm saying is these folks uh-huh. like there's no th- I think it ends with them done we also no have more jeans take into consideration that some people just do this for fun and they believe they do it for the lols because yeah, and it's really hard it's to differentiate funny. I think I'm yeah. getting better at it mm-hmm. but it's hard to you go is this person just a dick or is this person a stupid dick because mm-hmm. some people have hobbies and some people this is their hobby going on yeah. Twitter but and, those, ma- Kyle's dad, and making people upset dad. the dummy Kyle's the dad. genuine dad. dummies and the trolls are equally lonely yes and that gives me a little bit of comfort but those people that, who I are think it trolls, ends with they them know better and they're not doing better which is a shame yes no it's 100% a shame it's like you know what South Park uh, the last season was a little weird but one one part that wasn't even that funny but it was just so on point there was that and if you're catching up spoiler alert fast forward a little bit there was this band of trolls and Kyle's dad was part of them. Now, the band of trolls were all the people that I just portrayed. Just l- loners, basically. And had nothing going on. And they were like, fuck it. I'm just going to troll people. And then they're talking about Kyle's dad. Like, you're hurting inside. I know what you are. Like, wh- what is it? What is your deep pain inside? And then after a few episodes, he goes, there's nothing wrong with you at all. You're, you're not hurting inside. The world hasn't wronged you. You're just an asshole. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, Some people, I'm like, you know what? For fun. Some people are mean and grumpy, <laughs> and you go, I get why you're mean and grumpy, and that's okay. And Things you know happen what? to you. Yeah. Let's, let's hug it out, and we're, we'll talk this out. We'll be friends. Let's joke around. Let's go have a coffee. Let's go do whatever. But some people are just fucking assholes. <laughs> and Kyle, that's what bothers me, because they know better. But they're egging on all the dummies who actually believe it. And uh, there was this, I think his name was Trevor Vale. It was on the Joe Rogan podcast. He's like an actual honest-to-God archaeologist. I saw him at Real Sports recently. He's an honest-to-God archaeologist. And he's watching a video of this imbecile who is being serious or not, talking about the dinosaurs never existed. And I'm like, oh my god. An archaeologist has, has wasted to watch this. 45 yeah. minutes of his archaeologist time listening to this idiot. Having to, like, think of all the energy that people who have inexpendable energy spend on morons. <laughs> you should watch, um, if you want to ruin your day, watch Bill Nye on Tucker Carlson. <laughs> Uh, because basically, by the way, they, they de- why is Bill Nye being interviewed by the ghost of Tucker Carlson? <laughs> why is Tucker who was, Carlson who was R.I.P. murdered years ago by John Stewart? 
Why is the ghost of Tucker Carlson still on television? <laughs> because for whatever reason, there are some people you if work your whole career. If he ever spoke to me, I would walk right through him. I'd be like, what? It's like I can still hear him. He's dead. He's dead. Tucker well, Carlson. And he's here's gone. here's how dead he is because this is his seventh show. Was it on Battle the same of, network? Battle of the Bowties. Seventh show, Steve. Fuck? He's had seven, six canceled shows, and they still believe in him. There Your are some people. First names Tucker. Sorry. There are some people you believe. For whatever reason in entertainment, there are some people with horseshoes shoved right up their rear ends, and it doesn't matter how many times they fail, someone gives them a shot. There are other people who work their whole lives, are extremely talented, and everybody seems to ignore, mm-hmm. and I don't understand that. Tucker Carlson seems like the first. You know, Just Tucker guy, Carlson's th- nose smells even, like shit. Even conservatives are like, <laughs> eh, I prefer Hannity. Like, <laughs> oh. you know what I mean? I, oh, I, I'll take Glenn back. You know, I, it's it's just so funny. Anyway, I, I it, it makes me laugh. The Bill Nye thing's funny because it's it's almost like listening to, um, I guess it's now Shannon Sharp and uh, our favorite guy. Skip Bayless? Skip Bayless. Oh, but fuck. It, it's just like, a, but Bill Nye's just like, science. And Tucker Carlson's like, oh, yeah! And then just, and then Bill Nye, Bill Nye's like, well, science. Because he and should be, like, though. That's his job is to, oh, yeah. <laughs> It's great, but anyway, it also wrecked your day. Let's it. do the press conference, shall we? The presser. SDP. Steve. The earth is flat. Whoa, Black Betty. Bam, balam. Obviously. Want, wants to. Oh, sorry, breaking news from Chris Johnson. The Leafs have signed Jeremy Bracco to a three-year entry-level contract. Starting oh, next yay. season. So, uh, yeah, be with don't, the Marlies. don't worry about it. Fabulous. Everyone was a little bit worried about that. Don't I worry. listened to the past podcast when I run out of new ones to listen to, and you have mentioned TLC often. Which show would be your favorite show on that channel? <sighs> oh, I got one. I got the an answer to this. TLC only airs very frustrating shows. <laughs> um, my 600-pound life is... You just want to kick the television. Mm-hmm. Like, because hoarders is very often, it's like, it's an illness, right? And you're like, mm-hmm. okay, I understand why they can't let go of these things. My 600 pound life, what makes me so mad about that show is they usually, like, they're, they're in the hospital. They're in the fucking hospital because they're over 600 pounds. And they have four or five golf ball size brain family members bringing them bags of fast food. And you're like, those people should be arrested for yeah. attempted murder. Those are like, you're in the hospital for this reason. You should be arrested for bringing this person food. What the so fuck is, is the matter with you in your head? Is that your favorite show? No. <laughs> in terms of getting real, none of them are my favorite show. My favorite show is turning the channel. My favorite program on that network is sex sent me to the ER. <laughs> Because it is all I like all that those show. stories are fake. They're all oh, fake. No, no, they're all real. All 100% <laughs> no, fake. No, dog, they're the realest. <laughs> they're TV's real all the time. Real. You know what was my favorite? Uh, it, I think it was only a one-part special. Gypsy Might have been two-part. No, two-part special. It happened in 2011. I was in Calgary, and I will never forget this because it was awesome. It was called The Virgin Diaries. And it's funny, Virgin doesn't even go far enough to describe these people because oh, they are so conservative that I, they don't even believe in kissing or holding hands. Mm-hmm. Until you get married. Is this and, the one? Oh, no. And it is. Do you have a clip? Uh, I, I, I do have a clip. It would only work visually. It works vi- because here's the thing. First off, the this couple, they they really like love each other. And they are kind of adorable in their geeky sort of way. And they only believe in butterfly kisses. Literally, it's your it's your um, your your eyelashes. So you have to eyelash kiss someone. Mm. And that's how you do that, which is really awkward to which watch. Which is normal. So then they get to their wedding yeah. day, Jesse. And they have never kissed before. And the first time you kiss, you're perhaps maybe not as sharp as you would be 10, 15 times in. And they almost swallow each other's heads. And it is so Here's how they make out. (laughs) It's as if they had their hands tied behind their back and someone shoved uh, an everlasting uh, gobstopper or like a jawbreaker. In between. In between their mouths. And they were like, you're not allowed to drop it. (laughs) It look was up like TLC Virgin Diaries and look just watch the promo. It when I, when I see standing. Iggy and his friends fight over like a like a toy and they thrash. That's what it looked like. Uh, whatever I, works for you, man. On that channel, whatever works it. for you. But oh my god, that show I was love, awesome. It's I hate it deeply and bitterly. But <laughs> if I watch it with Sarah Louise, it's fun. <laughs> my six hundred pound life. 
Uh, just all of them. Anything. All of them. They were on a well, roll there. My like, favorite they... character on my 600 pound life, because it's obviously it's not the same people every time. Is oh, I gained 600 pounds again. Uh, <laughs> they they don't really have recurring characters. The doctor. The doctor. He's just got this this like kind of throaty voice. And and again, the fucking family members. They bring him the food, and he's like, "What did you expect to happen? I asked you to lose." 35 pounds, you gain three, <laughs> you schlub. <laughs> I've been it's eating just, salads. Well, yeah, just, you've also been funny, eating four it's like, Again, it's a scientific mind going, what the fuck did you expect? <laughs> that's I a told you. That's a disease, though, I think. I think that's a mental disorder. Underrated? <laughs> But again, I, I don't put the blame. These people are immobile. They can't move. No. Someone's feeding them shit, and it's their family. Yeah. Sorry. Cake Boss. Underrated. Very good show. Uh, Didn't they have a controversy? Crazy about it. Did they? I don't know. I don't know. It's I like, hard to be controversial I just with cake. Looking at the food. <laughs> you know what? I used to really like uh, Storage Wars and all those ones. But then you found out they're they're fake. Oh, yeah, they're fake. I can't I can't do that. There's an Egyptian mummy in this storage <laughs> locker. Like ah, <laughs> we found like, Noah's Ark in this storage locker. That, that is really that. wow. What a crazy find. That's wow. great. Like a bunch of people would just. And by the way, they open it and it's just Jesus. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. I have eight hundred dollars. I've been waiting for Jim. Jim forgot to pay make his payments and I've been stuck in here ever since. Oh hi Jesus. Like it's weird. Um. Uh. What's the, what's the, Pawn Stars? Pawns. No. <laughs> I'm going to get my friend who knows a lot about yeah. coffee cups. And he brings in his friend yeah. who knows a lot about coffee cups. I'm going to get this appraised. Everything's we appraised. brought the Holy Grail. It is the most priceless thing on earth. I actually, I don't know if they Best still... Best I can do is 80 bucks. I don't know if they still do that show, but I have seen Rick... I think it's Rick Hansen? No, Rick something. I don't know. The, the main character. Predator? The no. No, that's Chris a different... Hansen. That's Chris Hansen. <laughs> I, like, I think what? his name is Rick Hansen. Uh, he has shown up now on history television shows. So he'll come on and he'll be like, just... I'm like, it's the... You know, normally you have historians talking about history. They got the Pawn Stars guy, Rick, on talking about... <laughs> Which is fine. Which is like having but, us... Like, okay, Steve, talk about World War One. All right. So I listened to Dan Carlin. And, and here's what Dan Carlin Here's what Dan Carlin said, and it'll blow your fucking mind. So uh, Germany lost. Next question. <laughs> Final question. I'm gonna Who's be so late. The biggest name you've interacted with over social media, but never met in real life. Who? Oh. Hmm. Ellie Golding. Dan Carlin. Oh yeah, you got to tweet. For- Man, Adam's gonna fucking crush me. Ellie, um, yeah. Eric Young. Oh, he the follows wrestler. us. Yeah, yeah. He's the- he listens to oh, this show. Yeah, yeah. I-, I hope so. Shout out Eric Young. Is it a Showtime Eric EY? Young? Or something? Yeah, 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 Showtime yeah. EY on Twitter. Yeah, 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 he's been he has been listening to this show for a very long time. For like almost since the beginning. And gave us like a huge shout out in our first a year. A bunch of times. Yeah. A bunch he's of times. Awesome. Yeah, he's the best. We've been meaning to have him on. We gotta have him on. We do. We do. There's that's embarrassing. I'm we still confused as to whether or not he likes the Leafs or Predators. I remember <laughs> still confused, Eric. Oh. Where do your loyalties lie? Yeah, Eric. But he's with uh NXT now, I think. Yeah. So like is he a little more locked down? I don't know. Are we, we gonna should be ask able him. to get him? We should ask him. Um, Do you know what a dream of mine that would be to have a wrestler on my hockey podcast? That'd be pretty cool. There was a time where I liked wrestling more than hockey. There was there was a time. You like wrestling more than hockey? There was a time. Wow, when I was a kid. I think every kid has that time. You like WWE more than Gary Volk? What's wrong with you? I mean, that time was the Leafs missed the playoffs for two years. Yeah, Uh, which led right into the Attitude Era. It's perfect. The Leafs got bad. I think that might be part of the reason wrestling is so huge in Toronto. The Leafs got bad right when wrestling got good. And wrestling had a good hot streak. Wrestling's never been bad. It's just you stop being 13. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I had a when we went to Raw uh in uh Monday Night Raw in Toronto, uh, it was so imagine much fun. Imagine you were 13. <laughs> oh my god, it would have been amazing. Um, I still can't get over how much fun the New Day were. Like they, they oh, were just so New great. New Day is great. Um, and we saw Rollins and uh, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. That awesome match uh, in Toronto where Rollins is jumping all over the fucking ACC. It, it is <laughs> that funny. Was awesome, you're, Jesse. I think you make a good point with the, you're not 13 anymore. <laughs> you're because just not 13. Because and I hate the word content. 
Mm. But never have I seen content stretch so far. The only one, the only shows that are better at stretching a storyline than the WWE are Japanese anime cartoons. Um, nobody. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon. Stretch. How I want to know how long the Frieza battle was. Oh, it has to be like a season. What planet did that happen on, Namek? I want to know how long know. they were on Namek. It's like, hold on, I need to battle Frieza, and, and the whole episode is opening the door to Frieza. <laughs> like, it's on both sides, the door. So <laughs> wrestling makes, what, a hundred weekly shows a year, if you count two, two years. It's a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Raw and SmackDown each week. And then, and of then course, all they their have, pay-per-views. Which are, what, six or seven? Four. It's six. probably, like, close to, like, 130 shows a year. So I'm like, well, plus house shows. Yeah, plus house shows. So it's more and than And they that. keep all those storylines going. It's one of the greatest television ever. Yeah. And, you know, they also do, these wrestlers, and they're busy, they also do those WWE-produced movies. Yeah. Which, by the way, exist. If you wanted to see... Oh, they, they, films. They have found that people really like action movies that are just obnoxious, like they made all the time in the 80s. So what they do is they make their, they take their stars and go, here's a fake gun, we're going to explode some things, just look at the WWE camera. WWE figured out how to just inject like a money IV intravenous, yeah. except it withdraws money <laughs> from its customers. It's amazing. I got in there and I was like, I need a $40 t-shirt. I almost got one. <laughs> I almost, oh, got oh. I almost got one for Enzo Amore and Big Cass. I know we got to go here, but I have a, I have a story. I have a story. And I have something I need to bring up now. <sighs> cool. I'm just going to get home at I'm 6. I'm hungry, Adam. That's fine. Okay, we'll deal with it, both of you. I'm I hungry. will. I, will. I want to know if I've got a problem. Yes. Oh, this is it's non-problem. Jesse knows about this problem. So here's what happened. <laughs> so Sunday night, we're at the Jenny's game. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I've grown up near here. I've, I've paid attention to the Jennies. They're close by. I'm declaring for the Jennies. I'm going with the Gen- Oshawa Generals. I'm a Generals fan. So as an introductory Ooh. Oshawa Generals fan. Go Knights. Incorrect, <laughs> incorrect reaction. I decide that Ooh. I want to get a jersey. Now they have these amazing throwback jerseys that they were wearing for the last game of the season, which we saw, They're which are sold out. Like off-white, red, and navy blue. blue. They're the navy blue. Oh my God, beautiful. But... It's a red team, and their thing is like sea, sea of red, basically, uh, for the playoffs. Th- this playoff, yeah, I think, is united by red. United by red. And, and I think the year they is, won was dread the red. And the rule is they kick you out of the stadium if you're not wearing red. Because it's true. Well, Nobody could not buy red. Well, they kick throwback. you in the balls first. So, oh, yes. <laughs> so then, I would have bought the throwback jersey, but I couldn't. So I bought the typical red jersey that Steve has. But instead of my name on the back... Uh, I got Daniil Antropov's name on the back. Nick Antropov's son. Yeah, and here's the thing. He's it's 16 in a truck. It's a, yeah, yeah, he's huge. <laughs> uh, Brian Boyle, but a teenager. He's an, now, Nick now, Antropov, but a teenager, I guess. <laughs> so I'm standing in the Ridiculous. store, and Steve and Jesse are with me, and I grab this jersey, and, and it was actually Jesse that pointed it out. He's like, look, it's autographed. You could get, and I'm like, can I wear an autographed jersey in the stands, or is that something that you hang up? Because normally you hang it up. And Jesse's like, well, kids, kids wear the autographed jersey in the stands. And I'm like, well, that does make me feel better. So I'm, well, <laughs> I'm going back and forth because the jersey without anybody's name on it is like a hundred bucks. This one is 185, but there's 15 percent off. And it literally was the only time that I 165. I've, 160, 165, but it cost me 157, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, 165 the, plus tax minus minus okay. 15. Yeah. So there so, you go. <laughs> so you got 2% off. Yeah, I get 2% <laughs> off because our taxes are so high. Yeah. Um, and I I was going back and forth, and I, it was the first time I've ever seen Jesse get super heated with me. And he was like, I'm, oh, he was yeah, like, I we, upset. <laughs> we do need to talk about that. So we're in a very crowded it's not junior a hockey store. game store, junior hockey team store, after a junior hockey game. You know who goes to junior hockey games? Families and children. <laughs> and Jesse's going, get the fucking jersey. <laughs> <laughs> fucking buy the fucking, look at the fucking price. <laughs> and I'm like, there is an eight-year-old two feet right from there. you. Um, Adam needed to now, buy the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse but, uh, got up to Steve levels of volume going fucking buy the fucking jersey he was upset in he front was... of all these kids it was a very poor decision he was about to make and just walk away and not buy the super cheap I was jersey. with you but I used my indoor voice no, and I was like I Adam you should purchase so, so, so Jesse got genuinely those. frustrated and was like buy the fucking jersey and I did because <laughs> sometimes you need a friend to kick you in the ass right yeah. so I bought the jersey I spent 157 Canadian dollars okay the next morning I'm at breakfast television it's 5.30 a.m. 
and the Pope I, is on. I log on to the internet to go, I need to get some some Converse 2s for the summer. I need some new shoes just to wear around everywhere, kind of, you know, whatever. And for some reason, I see a replay of the Toronto Maple Leafs game from Saturday night. What was unique about the Toronto Maple Leafs game Same Saturday pass. night? Bingo. Sorry, sure. So I, no, 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 that's good. <laughs> I was going to hold Jesse on that one because he already knows what happened. So I log on to the Toronto Maple Leafs web store. And you hit the real sports section. And I, and lo and behold, there is an Austin Matthews St. Pat's jersey. And the St. Pat's jerseys I loved. I didn't get a Heritage Classic jersey, even though I thought they were great. Centennial. Sorry, Centennial Classic jersey. Because I had already bought a New Leafs jersey this year, and I said, no, 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 I must stop. You just reminded me that I have one. I was like, yeah, I didn't get one either. Oh, wait, no, I did. Yeah, I bought you, one. You <laughs> yeah. I bought one. I need to get my name on it. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, because you played. <laughs> I did. I did. I'm just saying. We didn't talk about that one, though. So, I'm like, oh, this can't be that bad. The price is like $175. I'm like, well, that's not bad. And there's a promo code. There's an NHL 15% off promo code. Bingo. Let's do this. So then I get to looking. What else do they have on the store? <laughs> so oh. they have a, a blue Maple Leafs sh- t-shirt. And I'm like, well, I can wear that this summer. That's great. It's nice to have a nice, you know, brand new logo on it. And there's a green Maple Leafs t-shirt. Well, I can wear that next St. Patrick's Day. Both are 30-something dollars. I'm like, "Eh, well, it's a little expensive, but it's a Toronto Maple Leaf logo. (laughs) Then I go to cash out. And my $175 jersey, my early 30-something t-shirts, which is already a lot of money, by the way. We're well into the 300s right now. Convert to Canadian dollars. Oh, Uh, isn't that always the worst (laughs) online shopping? Airlines. Anytime you're buying a plane ticket, that's how it always works. It's always U.S. dollars. Tickets for anything. You're just like, oh, this is so cheap. And then you hit the damn checkout, and it's so eight hundred million. Canadians are not cheap people because we buy things almost and everything. And we pay a boatload of tax. Almost everything we buy, we buy guessing what the actual price is. Because we pick up a $15 item, and we bring it to the cash, and none of us are good at math. And we go, oh, turns out it's $18 yeah. or whatever it is. More like over 20 in American, right now. Yeah, I mean, and then it. So you get the ticket, and you add the tax, and then oh shit! Guess what? It's American. So over the course worst. of 20, Canadians are not cheap. Over the course of twelve hours, I spent five hundred and fifty dollars on hockey merchandise. About. <laughs> you you well, know the U.S. dollar thing. Yeah, the U.S. Ooh, dollar thing four hundred plus my hundred and fifty dollar Andropov jersey. Yeah, you're like the shoes guy. Remember that YouTube video, shoes. I like your shoes. Uh, oh no! Hey there! I like your hair. Who does your, I think you did a few. Uh, Who different does ones. your hair? <laughs> These jerseys got three hundred fucking dollars. <laughs> Let's get them. <laughs> That's you. That's awesome. So, Adam, have I not taught you the way of free things? <laughs> How did you buy all these things like an idiot? I am an idiot. Why didn't you just wait for people to hand them to you? Well, like a normal person. I'm surprised no one from the Leafs organization was on breakfast television to promote. They might have been, but I wasn't on last week. Oh, and I figured you would have got free jerseys. No, no, they don't do that. (laughs) You got a World Cup one. Well, yeah, but that's not the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Toronto Maple Leafs are worth more than Team Canada in these parts, believe it or not. Uh, So, anyway, um, and, and here's the thing. This is the worst part. Caprice has these new shoes from, uh, I believe Chiz. they're Nike or Adidas, right? They're one of the, the new really cool shoes, and they cost Chiz. $300. On Saturday this weekend, and it's a lot, but she works on her feet. She's a stylist. She works on her feet all day. They're an investment. Are they They Are they obnoxiously comfort? priced? Yes. But I gave her shit for having $300 shoes, and then the next day... I spent five hundred and fifty dollars on, on, on four items: two jerseys, two T-shirts, five hundred and fifty dollars. And I know Adam. Adam will wear those jerseys maybe twice in the next calendar year. <laughs> and oh, calendar or ever? Uh, oh, calendar ever. But I like looking at them. And those T-shirts, maybe four or five times before. I don't know. Probably donating. Caprice will wear those shoes every day. Yep. For the, the next Andrew year. Rob jersey is you had to get it. Yeah. There was no choice. He's correct. The St. Pat's one, that's probably a half a Okay, get. no, because after the yeah. game, they were going to burn them all. Yeah. So there was only five left. 
Because they burned the rest of them. Back, yeah. <laughs> they burned all but those five. And Matthews was the only one that scored in the same patch jersey. So I thought, hey, that also makes sense. Okay, so the original St. Pat's jerseys were soured on me because I know the Leafs didn't win that game. It was a tie against Buffalo. Can I get these awesome, wicked St. Pat's jerseys knowing the Leafs lost the one game that they played them? No, because it was against the Blackhawks. And <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> and those are more authentic than the other St. Pat's jerseys, apparently. These were like the most authentic St. Pat's jerseys. I think jersey. they look better because didn't the Leafs go with the, was it white or green helmets? Green helmets. Instead of that stupid brown, yeah, they went with brown. That yeah, yeah, leather yeah. brown, and and I remember leather. when they printed it in the newspaper, it looked purple. Yeah, it looked crappy. They still had those in all of the NHL games up until I think this season. Yeah, you could still play with those brown helmets and brown gloves. Gross. <laughs> so I'm I'm embarrassed at myself. Um, I haven't mentioned this to Caprice. So if we could be cool, that'd be great. But do I have a problem? That's my question. I'm, I think I'm going to text her and ask her how she feels. <laughs> do you want to know what Adam said about your shoes? I'll just make a bunch of shit up. So t- tweet me, do I have a problem? Steve, do I have a problem? Yeah. Your problem is uh, you didn't buy enough stuff at the general store. Jesse, do I have Agreed. a problem? You should have got a couple mugs. Sweatpants. Next time I go, the sweatpants, I think I'm going to get those cool. sweatpants. Yeah. Couldn't yeah, justify yeah. it, but... I think I'm going to do it. Listen, man, I don't buy anything. I buy nothing. I buy cheap clothes, clearly. <sighs> I'm just saying. Oh, I'm going to be so late. Well, we're going to end the show. Anyway, yeah. thought I'd let bring that up there. Can you take me downstairs or do you not have enough time? Uh, I don't have enough time. <laughs> <Suck>. <laughs> ah, I love you, Steve. All right. STP out. We will see man, you. Don't you. do that. STP out. Don't STP <laughs> Oh, we'll no, see Thursday. No, we're not. No, but no, we'll I see agree with Jesse. Oh. We have to banter for like another ten seconds just to erase the out that you just what? did. Ryan Seacrest does that with American Idol. Well, Noel, Ryan Seacrest is a Knights fan, and I don't like him. So <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> Screw that team. Go, go, London. Fuck London. <laughs> Are they in the playoffs? I mean, probably. Uh, yeah, assume, right? They always <laughs> buy their way to a championship. Oh, I said it. Are the Marlies going to make the playoffs? Yeah, ask that question. Are I. They, uh, uh, I forget how the AHL playoff format works. Because I look at the standings and I don't get it. Because I don't want to look well, it up. I I'm mean, lazy. they can start by not losing games in regulation that they were leading 4-1 in the third. How about that? How about that? How about that? All right. We'll see you Thursday. Love you. I think that erased it out. Out! Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.